back, placing the Florida Athletic Program in jeopardy. But under interim head coach Gary Darnell, the Gators are battling back. And most of the burden for that battle has been shouldered by this young man, junior running back Emmett Smith. He was one of the nation's leading rushers this season, despite all the turmoil, and has carried the ball to 58 Florida rushing records. Today, the Gators hope his incredible power and agility will carry them to victory. The Washington Huskies showed some dogged determination of their own this season, as Don James' team won five of their last six. That strong finish came on the rifle arm of their quarterback, senior Kerry Conklin. Today, he concludes a record-setting career at Washington by leading the Huskies against the Gators of Florida. But the key for the Huskies may be the strong legs of running back Greg Lewis today in Freedom Bowl 6. This afternoon, we're in Southern California as the Southeastern Conference matches up with the Pac-10. It's the first ever meeting between the Gators of Florida and the University of Washington Huskies. And the weather today at Anaheim Stadium is absolutely perfect. Under a cloudless sky at 70 degrees, no doubt the wind is not going to be a factor today. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Anaheim Stadium. I'm Joel Myers alongside Paul McGuire, and joining us on the sidelines hey, does he have some exciting offense? The Gators kick it away. John David Franks gets into it. Bino Bryant and Eric Alozzi back there. It'll be Eric Alozzi with room to move across the 30. Out to the 36-yard line. So superb field position for Washington to start their first drive of the day. A 32-yard return for the sophomore from San Bernardino. And there's the young man we were just talking about with a flag down to the play, Kerry Conklin. Join him in the backfield, Darius Turner, who gets the start due to an injury to James Compton. And Greg Lewis, the outstanding tailback. The wide receivers, they look so often to Andre Riley, Orlando McKay as well. On the offensive line, the big tight end, Bill Ames. 34 catches this year. Pau Cohen, Mala Mala. And up the middle on the offensive front, one of the largest, almost like an NFL offensive line, Cunningham, Brostick, and Dean Kirkland. Except Brostick, is he a funny guy? <laughs> you sit and talk to him. If you don't come away laughing, there's something wrong with you. Many feel he'll be a first-round draft choice in the upcoming NFL draft later this spring. They put Lewis in motion on first and ten, and it's intercepted almost. Dropped. Almost picked off by Bartley. We'll call him Fee Bartley. His first name is Ephesians, but his teammates call him Fee, so we'll go with that. Bartley almost had the interception. Conklin just waited too long to throw this ball to the outside. He's trying to hit Riley number 23, but Bartley, what's, what's the, he's throwing the, the whole length of the field, and Bartley just gets there, should have had the interception. They double up. Riley and McKay on the same side. Lewis again out of the backfield in motion. And it's the fullback. It's Darius Turner. Good surge on the offensive line to take him inside the 45-yard line all the way down to the 43. Defensively now for the Gators of Florida. The smallest defensive front that the Washington Huskies have faced all year long. Murray, Culpepper, and Johnson. Two outside backers, Miles and Richardson. This is the strength of the Florida defense, the speed of their linebackers. Moore and Odom, the two inside backers. And in the secondary, Watkins and Fain. Fain considered by many to be one of the best cornerbacks in the country. And Bartley and White. The two safeties. What a defense it is for the Gators of Florida. On third and short, Greg Lewis can't pick up the first down. Did a good job just to get back to the original line of scrimmage, the 43-yard line. One thing that Coach James was talking about was the overall speed of the Florida Gators. And that time, Culpepper was in the backfield, almost had the handoff, but they are so quick, they got back to the ball for no gain. So they get the great field position on the 32-yard return by Alozzi. Then they get 15 yards tacked on because of the personal foul against Florida. And still can't pick up a first down. Channing Wiles in to punt it away. <laughs> Waiting back, Stacy Simmons for the Florida Gators. Wiles is funny. It's angled to the opposite side, though, with a flag down on the play. 33-yard punt. As it's taken in by Terrence Barber, the reserved wide receiver from 
Auburndale, Florida. Spied out about the flags, though. Is the Washington offense going to come back onto the field? Tim Polk, number 99, runs into the kicker. And actually, what happened was he trips. And he tried to avoid the kicker, but he bumped in the ticker. The kicker did some great acting and fell down. Running into the kicker by the defense, five-yard penalty. That penalty will give him a first down. That young man, Tim Pollock, had a block earlier this year on the punt for the Florida Gators. Almost gets this one. Watch this. You see, Pollock, he's just trying to stop. I mean, the kicker falls down. <laughs> and the official is standing there. I would have never called that. Shaky at best. They get a first and ten out of it. So a couple of early penalties against the Gators. Darius Turner, the fullback, finding room up the middle. Breaking tackles inside the 25 for a first down. All the way to the 24-yard line. 14 yards on the run. Finally pulled down around the ankles by Kerry Watkins. Joel, now here's what we're talking about. of over-pursuit by a football team. When you watch Florida on this play, now watch what happens. Turner lets them pursue to the outside, and then they seal off, and he cuts back. Brustick, the, the center, gets an excellent block, but the over-pursuit of Florida leaves that hole. They pick up a first down. A very balanced Washington Husky attack puts Greg Lewis in motion once again, their leading ground gainer. They fake on the belly dive. Conklin running out of options. Takes up the middle. He's got about three on the carry. Down to the 21-yard line. So as opposed to putting it up for grabs, Kerry Conklin playing it safe. Top school records for passing yardage and total offense this year, but he's compared to so many great quarterbacks they've had in the past, like Chandler, like Warren Moon, that they say Conklin would have been better off had he been a five-year Husky. He was just one of those guys that just he needed that much time to develop. He had a, he had a sensational year for him, but next year would have been a great year for him. That maybe the pros would have taken a harder look at him. Second and seven from the 21. Conklin has to unload in a hurry. Has a man wide open. Touchdown, Bailey. The Huskies are on the board. Perfect pass by Kerry Conklin to the sophomore from Seattle, Mario Bailey. Didn't take long for the Huskies to capitalize on those Florida mistakes. I'm talk, you talk about Conklin putting the ball right on target but watch who's ends up it's Odom ends up is a linebacker covering the receiver now that's not blown coverage he's supposed to have him short but he should have had some help deep by Watkins number four John McCallum the senior from Seattle in for the point after tries missed a couple already this year but that one through the uprights and a successful start today for the team from the Pac-10 the University of Washington Huskies and after that pass Nobody blocking for Kerry Conklin. He had everybody out looking for the pass. And the Huskies lead it by head coach in Gainesville. Well, I think it's a given that, you know, it's, a, it's an honest assumption that, you know, Steve Spurrier is going to be the next football coach at Florida. I think that's the intent of the administration. And I don't think anybody has any qualms about that, myself included. I think, you know, everything's been done the best it could be done for, by our administration and by myself and by our staff and by our players. I think the time has come if it can ever make the match for Steve to come back to Florida. Now's the time. And if there, for some reason that it didn't work out for him and the University of Florida couldn't get together on the notion, then I'd feel very strong about the reasons why I ought to be at Florida. Gary Darnell leading his team into the sixth annual Freedom Bowl in Anaheim, California. Very blunt and direct. And I like that. And, uh, you know, they've kept the same pattern. They've done an excellent job. He's coaching the defense. Whitey's coaching the offense, and they went on with it. He told us yesterday, actually a couple of days ago, that Whitey Jordan handles all the offensive play calling. Stacy Simmons will take it to the Gators from the eight-yard line. Goes down on his own, and he had plenty of real estate up the middle. Oh, Joe, he had a hole up the middle. He might still be running. Let's look at that Gator offensive unit now, led by the freshman from Texas, Donald Douglas. Emmett Smith. Working in the eye behind Cedric Smith in the backfield. The wide receivers, talented ones for the Gators. Simmons and Mills. Offensive front, Thomas, Neely, and Dirk. And up the middle, Ishmael, Dixon, and Bromley. They've got good size on the offensive line. You talk about a very small defensive unit for Florida. But up front, they're large offensively. It's complete. It's Ernie Mills with a reception for a first down. 
Pass the 30 to the 33-yard line. Dana Hall, the quarterback from Diamond Bar, California, giving a big, big cushion to the wide receiver. That's what they need for Donald Douglas because John Durden, the offensive tackle on the right side, the senior for the Gators, was telling us earlier this year, Douglas would look at his first option. If it wasn't available, he'd run right away. Now he's showing more confidence. Surprise, surprise, surprise. Passing right off the bat. Both teams are passing. First and ten. The option, there goes Donald Douglas. He is an incredible option quarterback. He may take it all the way. Donald Douglas getting the Gators an early touchdown. That's why he was recruited by the University of Houston and also Texas A&M. Douglas from Liberty, Texas, they wanted him to stay at home and run the option in the Southwest Conference. You know the amazing part about it? And we talked to the Washington Husky players about this. When you key Emmett Smith as much as they have to key him, and you're concentrating on Emmett Smith, and then all of a sudden, watch what happens when Douglas comes down. Look at the hole. There goes Smith up inside. Everybody goes to Smith. There's nobody on the outside to take the quarterback. He could have pitched or ran with the ball. He ran with it. Oh, we can tell already it's going to be a defensive struggle. <laughs> it's tied up at the Freedom Bowl with 11.56 left in the first quarter. The Freedom Bowl is brought to you by the Chrysler Corporation, the only car company with a guaranteed rebate. By AT&T, the right choice. And by the Upjohn Company. If you're concerned about hair loss, see your doctor. Welcome back to the Freedom Bowl in Anaheim, California. We're looking at Disneyland right now with the Florida Gators tying things up after that 67-yard run by Donald Douglas. All right, Joel, just take a look. Right here on the end of the line, these two guys, one will end up here and one goes this way, the blocking. They're all following up in here, Emmett Smith, and when they do that, look at Douglas. He goes out. He doesn't have to worry about the pitch man, and he just takes off down the field. There's no one there to catch him. Burkhalter, number 21, was the closest guy to him. He's a defensive back, but he outran him. That was the third longest run in Freedom Bowl history. Only a freshman from Liberty, Texas. He's backed up by the redshirt freshman today, Lex Smith. And Donald told me yesterday the Gators were over here at Anaheim Stadium. He's gaining confidence every day. It'll be taken by Alozi on the return. From inside his own five, Alozi breaking tackles. Out to the 35 near the 36-yard line. So another strong return of 33 yards by Eric Alozi. Joel, didn't the two coaches tell us we got to keep our defenses off the field? Well, two two plays and a touchdown. I don't keep they were right about off it. the field. <laughs> They're only on there for two plays. Unfortunately, it was a touchdown. Now, when the Huskies had the ball the first time, they got it at their own 36. Actually, outside of their own 45 after they tacked on that penalty, the 15-yard penalty against the Florida Gators on the personal foul call. It did not feature Greg Lewis. They were throwing the ball. Let's see if they go to Lewis, who's the single set now behind Kerry Conklin. And once again, he's in motion out of the backfield. Conklin looking off the first receiver. Going out, it's complete. Orlando McKay, his second favorite target. A 5'11", 180-pound sophomore from Mesa, Arizona, has the... Short completion of about eight yards. You know what Conklin's trying to do, which we saw in a film against what New Mexico did to Florida, is that they're trying to hit the tight end on a quick pattern. They're splitting the receivers way out to one side, putting a triple formation on the left side, putting the back Lewis in motion, and hoping that, that the tight end is uncovered, Bill Ames, and try to get the ball to him, number 89. Lewis has it on second and two and has more than enough for the first down out to the 49-yard line near the midfield stripe. Lewis, a junior from Seattle, and when we asked him uh, to characterize his running style yesterday, with a straight face, he said, uncoordinated and goofy. And I guess that's appropriate, being just down the street from Disneyland. All right, let's take a look at the blocking on that other side of the field. And that's Mala Mala, number 70. And they just they just get some excellent blocking up inside. Brostick, the center, the All-American center, the guy that's going to be probably taking number one in the draft, getting their blocks. First and ten for the Huskies outside of their own 49. They set up the screen for Lewis. He has blockers out in front. It developed quickly, and it's a nice one inside the 40. Lewis all the way down to the 30-yard line. 21 yards on the screen pass to Greg Lewis. This screen pass was set up so beautifully, and the two guys that get out in front are Brostick 
and Cunningham, number 79 and number 60. Now watch the blocking. Watch a Brustick. He'll cut inside to the right. Cunningham blocks to the outside. Odom misses the tackle, number 57, and Lewis is off and running down inside the 30. It's Florida defensive oh, yeah. unit finished the regular season ranked third in the nation, allowing their opponents only 242 yards a game. And the one thing the Huskies emphasized to us over the last couple of days, they have to do everything very quickly. There's the counter. Doesn't fool anyone inside the 30. A couple of yards for Greg Lewis down to the 28-yard line. With more on the Steve Spurrier situation, let's go downstairs to Jimmy Cephalo. Gentlemen, Bill Ardsbarger, the athletic director in Florida, had other commitments, is not here today, but I'm with Jeremy Foley, the associate athletic director at Florida. What can you tell us about the Steve Spurrier situation? Well, Jimmy, we're still talking with Steve. Obviously, we feel good about it, feel optimistic. But until you have his signature on the dotted line, you never know. Bill Arnsberger, as you said, is back in Gainesville. He's talking to Steve, and hopefully we'll have an announcement sometime in the next couple of days. All right, thanks very much, Jeremy Foley. Gentlemen? All right, thank you. Jimmy Cephalo with us at Freedom Bowl 6. Quick hitter. There's the tight end names, the one you were talking about, Paul, and it's good for a first down. On second and eight, they take it down to the 19-yard line. Ames has been featured quite a deal this year, catching 34 with three touchdowns. See, Joel, they take their wide receivers and put them to the right side of their formation. Then they have the tight end, Ames, and Greg Lewis, who is the running back, who is split out. And what they're trying to do is get a defensive back on the tight end, but off about seven or eight yards. So he just stands up, Conklin stands up and hits that quick pass, and you can pick up seven to ten yards on the play. The quick hitters working for Kerry Conklin and the Washington Huskies. He better throw to Ames. That's his roommate. <laughs> Conklin, yeah, he's, he told us yesterday, he said, you know, he had that quarterback mentality when he moved in as we were roomies because he's a year older than Conklin as Greg Lewis. Hammers it ahead inside the 15, close to the 13-yard line. Gain of a little bit better than six. And on that story regarding Ames and Conklin, the roommates for the Washington Huskies, he had that quarterback mentality because I slapped him around, threw him around a little bit. We worked him into shape. Bring him down to earth. Quick hitter <laughs> for Greg Lewis. Gain of a little bit better than six. Conklin set a new Husky single season passing mark. Over 2,500 yards this year, surpassing Sonny Six Killers. Old record back in 1970. Short yardage, Darius Turner has it. He's close to a first down. Pounding his way near the nine-yard line. Joel and what they're doing, Washington, they're just going up in the center. Rostick, number 60, is the center of the All-American. I mean, this guy is just a tremendous athlete. He's 290. Cunningham is 274. And Kirkland, number 51, the other guard, is 281. And they're blocking on Culpepper, who's 250. And they're, you, you look in the center of Florida's defensive line, it's like 35 pounds a man where they overpower him. And all they're doing is just blocking straight ahead. Watch the line of scrimmage. Now watch where Florida players end up. When you drive them back off the line, look at Brostick. He drove his man, Culpepper, about seven yards downfield. He's got 40 pounds on Brad Culpepper. Culpepper at 6'2", 250, Brostick 6'3", 290. And if he's 290, <laughs> I'm 155. <laughs> It's another first down. First and goal inside the 10. Another one to the tight end. They slip the pass down to the six-yard line. So you can see what Don James wants to do. Quick counts from the line of scrimmage, quick hitters, or very quick deliveries by Kerry Conklin. Well, they're, they're getting the ideal situation that they want. And again, when you spread it out and you have a tight end sitting there, and the only guy that's really covering him is an inside linebacker who is off anywhere from four to six yards, it's that quick pass. And I said before, it will pick up anywhere between 7 and 10 yards. Kerry Conklin now 5 of 6 in the passing department. Total of 63 yards. Second and goal, they're just outside of the 6. Greg Lewis tripped up, crossing the line. Falls forward to the 4-yard line. Lewis, second team, all Pac-10. Finished third in the Pacific 10 Conference this year in the league's rushing race. Averaging exactly 100 yards a game. He said he's very similar to Emmett Smith. He's, he's not all that fast, but he has great balance, so he can fit through tight spaces and keep his knees and his legs moving. You ever seen a back with bigger hands than him? <laughs> it's like what? I lost my hand when he shook it. Third and goal near the four. Conklin sets up three on the same side into the end zone. His receiver fell down. He wanted Andre Riley. He had all three on the same side, and he was looking for a flag. Well, he had... McKay and, and Riley. Now take a look at Riley. Riley is open right there. He's looking for a flag. 
but Riley slips down, and so did the defensive back, and that was Fane. He slips down, too. That ball wasn't catchable. Exactly that, and that's what the back judge was telling him. It was not a catchable pass, so don't look for a flag. John McCallum will try to break the tie. It'll be a 21-yard field goal attempt. He's perfect from within the 20 and 29 this year. 14 of 17 on the season. Don James told us yesterday he feels comfortable any time any, any time he goes inside 45. And McCallum right on target to give the Huskies their second lead of the afternoon. A 21-yard field goal for McCallum. And Washington leads it by three. Come home to the best in college football as Auburn battles Ohio State in the Hall of Fame Bowl. Then number five Florida State takes on sixth ranked Nebraska at the Fiesta Bowl. And a game that will determine the national championship as number one Colorado battles fourth ranked Notre Dame at the Orange Bowl. New Year's Day, the best bowls are on NBC. Welcome back to the Freedom Bowl in sunny Southern California. Joel Myers along with Paul McGuire and Jimmy Cephalo. As the Washington Huskies have just regained the lead over the Florida Gators of the Southeastern Conference. We could have quite a shootout this afternoon. Huskies moving it on a couple of drives already in the Florida offense. Well, they rank third in the Southeastern Conference this year, averaging almost 400 yards a game. Eight minutes have been played, just about eight minutes. The Gators ready to get it back with Stacey Simmons, their leading receiver, taking it from the 11 on the kickoff. Can he get the block to the outside? No. He crosses the 25, and he's down at the 28-yard line. Tommy Smith, the reserve rover back, making the stop. Defensively now for the Huskies of Washington. Huge group up front. Brown, Cook, and Travis Richardson. Linebackers, Harrison and Travis, the outside backers. Inside, it's Hoffman and Clifford. And a very deep secondary, very quick secondary. Lilo Lang. Paul, Briscoe, and Burkhalter as well. Emmett Smith has yet to touch the ball. He gets it for the first time today and won't be able to turn the corner. Good lateral pursuit along the line of scrimmage by the Washington Huskies to string the play out. Smith is down across the 31-yard line after a little bit better than three yards on the carry. Well, Jimmy Cephalo and you and I were sitting there watching Florida. Uh, on film against New Mexico. And Jimmy Cephalo found something. Just take a look at Emma Smith. He says, you watch this guy when he runs. It doesn't make any difference how many people hit him. When he finishes, he finishes upfield. He will gain that extra yard or two yards. We'll be talking to Emma just a little bit later today about whether he'll be back for the University of Florida next year. Douglas with a nice pass. is simply dropped by his wide receiver, Terrence Barber. So Douglas... Looking like he's got his rhythm very early. 67-yard run. Hit his first pass of the day. His second should have been taken in as well. He's throwing the ball extremely well. He can't catch it for him. I mean, you can't put the ball in a better position than he put it there for Barber. Third and long now. They keep Emmett Smith in there. And they bring in Daryl Perry as the fullback, the senior from Orlando. Third and seven. Douglas running out of time, throws it over the middle and overshoots his wide receiver, Stacey Simmons, by a good margin. Linebacker was dropping. That was Dave Hoffman. He also had help from the free safety, Eugene Burkhalter, but Douglas did not have a lot of time and took quite a hit. Douglas didn't have a lot of time. And I'll tell you, Simmons downfield got drilled, but you're watching it here. Douglas just doesn't have it. Briscoe comes in, and he makes the play, but the ball is gone. But Simmons going across the middle got drilled. <laughs> I guess you're not, you're, you can tackle him downfield. So after their second possession, three snaps and a punt for the Florida Gators. Charles Mincy waiting for the punt from Hank Road. Line drives it out, the returnable type. Mincy, though, will stay away from it. Almost like he lost it in the sun. It's inside the 20, a great bounce for the Gators. It is a very, very sunny day, and the sun really was right in his eyes. 54 yards on the punt by Roan, his second longest of the season. Be right back to Anaheim. NBC Sports serves your need to know all week long. Dial 1-900-454-3500 for NBC Scores Plus. 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, anywhere in the USA. Halftime of the Sun Bowl as Pittsburgh leading Texas A&M by 7. And we welcome you back to Anaheim Stadium, Joel Myers along with Paul McGuire, Jimmy Cephalo down on the sideline with us this afternoon. 70 degrees for kickoff for the Washington Huskies in their 11th bowl in the last 13 seasons, their second trip 
to Anaheim for the Freedom Bowl, where they won in 85, defeating the Buffaloes of Colorado. We'll all be watching, Paul, the Buffaloes on Monday night right here on NBC. I like them. And at Pittsburgh, Paul Hackett got the head coaching job today for the interim coach. Greg Lewis. He talked about tight spaces, maneuvered through a tight one there, all the way to the 20 for a gain of seven. Let's head downstairs to Jimmy Cephalo. I'm here with Jenny James, who's uh, the coach's daughter. I understand you wanted to cheer for his team uh, since you were a little girl. Has it been as enjoyable as you thought it would be? It has been more enjoyable than I ever thought it could be. I've had so much fun doing it. He told us that last year when they didn't go to a bowl game, you told him that he, you didn't appreciate it. I was really mad. I told him we, got, we had to get to a bowl because I just really wanted to do that. All right, you got a trip out of it. Thanks very much. Gentlemen. Thank you. Jimmy's really got tough duty down there. Across the 25, it's a first down for Greg Lewis and the Huskies. They are moving them out in the trenches now. They are working that smaller defensive front of the Florida Gators. That huge offensive line, which is similar to what we see every week in the NFL, Paul. They are NFL size. They really are. And here it is from ground level. Just take a look at this offensive line. Extro explode. Brotzik comes off the, off the ball extremely well. Pat Moore weighs 231 pounds. There's just no way that he can get away from, from the big center. First and 10 to the 27-yard line. Lewis, the lone one to the backfield. Conklin goes with play action pressure, comes, he's hit, he's sacked. Mark Murray, the left tackle, the junior from Zellwood, Florida, getting his eighth sack of the season. Fastest Gator defensive lineman, and he really displayed it that time. All right, yeah, but watch, watch on the outside, watch Murray. Now, you tell, tell me this is not holding. Where are the officials? Look at his shirt, is about being ripped off his back by Pa Koa. I mean, you've got to be able to see that still being held makes the play sack is all the way back to the 19 yard line second and long second and 18 now for the Huskies Conklin with better time and better protection he's got his receiver it's Orlando McKay it's complete close to the first down marker to the 34 yard line short by three yards of that first down 16 yards on the reception the sophomore from Mesa Arizona we're watching two very young teams today, especially the Florida Gators. Yeah, they are a young team. And the one thing when you talk to Washington about the Florida Gators is that when you're playing a bigger team, you can kind of screen a guy, get up in his face, and stay there. When you're playing a team that's as quick as Florida, you really have to stay with your blocks a lot longer because they'll get off and they're gone. They're down again. Lewis has the first down on third and three. Quick hitter across the 40 to the 41-yard line, and right now, everything going the way of the Washington Huskies. Well, you're going Kirkland again, Cunningham and Brostick up in the middle. Just take a look at the center of that offensive line. Look at him come off. Brostick goes up. They, they just make the blocks. They turn people to the outside. Lewis has the first down. It's easy. Gators with the fifth best in the nation at stopping the run, giving up an average of only 88 yards a game. Right now, Washington... Having it pretty much their way, and a wide receiver is wide open. That's McKay. Inside the 15 to the 13. I didn't know if it'd get there. As the defensive backs were converging, a 47-yard game. What happens on that play is the man that was covering him, McKay, was Will White, number nine, and he fell down. That was the free safety, Will White. Richard Fain coming over to help out. White's a redshirt freshman from Tallahassee as we take another look at that long, long reception. But when you take a look at it, number nine is covering McKay, and as they go downfield, yeah. Will oh, White falls down. He's Greg have a Lewis chance. on the first and 10 carry. From inside the 13 down to the 10 yard line. They gave up an average of only 2.5 yards per carry to their opponents this year. But as you can see, it's going to be difficult to slow down this massive offensive line of the Washington Huskies for a much smaller group defensively for the Florida Gators. Second, just about seven. Close to eight. 240 left in the first quarter. Washington driving once again with a 10-7 lead. There's the quick one. They go to Andre Riley. He's in. Touchdown, Huskies. Joel, there's just no way that a linebacker can get out and cover a wide receiver like Riley. 
The problem with this play was is the cornerback is standing in the end zone. When you take a look at this play and the throw is to the outside, if we can go back and take one more look at it, because the defensive back, Scavella, number 29, was sitting in the end zone. Andre Riley, his fifth touchdown grab of the season. McCallum in for the point after try. And hard to believe, though, Paul, that you're that close to the goal line and you're giving the wide receiver that much room. You, and you can't, not down on the goal line. Take a look at right up here. Now, there's Scavella. He is the quarterback. And when Riley comes off, look where he is. He's standing by the end zone. And it's just a quick pop pass. And it's touchdown. The linebacker on the inside cannot get there. Another touchdown for the Huskies. They lead it by 10, 234 left of the first quarter. Andre Riley on the touchdown reception. Leading receiver for the Washington Huskies this year. And welcome back to Freedom Bowl 6. Joel Myers along with Paul McGuire and Jimmy Cephalo. McCallum has it teed up. As Simmons and Lomack back deep. And there's the onside kick. Scramble, and the Huskies get it. They shock the Gators with the onside kick. The recovery made by Mike Allman, the free safety. <coughs> Do you believe this Washington start? I'll tell you something right now. Washington was offside on the kickoff, and they never called it. Right in the middle of the field, it's off to the left. Washington Huskies were offside, and they never called it. I love college football. Trick <laughs> plays all the time. A little gadget here, a little gadget there, and the fourth offensive series ready to come all in. All right, take a look. Right at the bottom of your screen, right at the hash mark, was the offside. Washington's got it first and ten. Great field position once again near their own 49-yard line. Play action for Conklin. Pressure coming. He's hit as he releases, and it falls incomplete. Good pressure on the quarterback. And that's Richardson, number 90. 6'5", 236 pounds. Got pretty good speed. And that is the definite strength the of the Florida Gator defense, complete. their defensive unit. We saw it on the films. When their linebackers are knocked down, they're so quick, they get back up, and they make the play three, three, four yards later. And that's the thing. When you set up in pass protection against this team, you have got to keep that guy right in front of you. You can't, if he gets one step beyond, beyond you, either one of these defensive linemen or linebackers, they're gone. Bailey in motion, second and ten. Conklin in trouble, throwing the screen. Flags down to the play. Lewis almost broke it. Tripped up, though. Coming up from the secondary, Will White, the free safety. He's down near the original line of scrimmage. Right around the 48-yard line, but it's probably a holding call. Throwing right in the middle, it's holding. holding. Washington hasn't made too many mistakes so far with two minutes and 17 seconds holding. left in the first quarter. On the offense, 10-yard penalty, still second down. Richardson, we, ju we just saw him before. Now look at look at Richardson. He's, he's bad because I don't know what he did. <laughs> Hold it, hold it! That uh, looks like action from the WWF. Yeah, but I'd like to know what they're having in those pregame meals. <laughs> I'm going go over there and eat with those guys. <laughs> that's, that's some good stuff there. Ten-yard mark off on the holding call. The junior from Atlanta into the game just a little bit. <laughs> it's now second and 20 with the ball back at the 39. Conklin, 8 of 11. Blitz coming up the middle for the linebacker. Lewis trying to get to the outside, but he won't be able to get there. At the 43, he goes down. The free safety knifing through to make the hit. Will White. Isn't it amazing, Joel, when you're looking right from here and you, we can, we're looking down onto this field and you can see that hole open up and it looks like that Lewis can run for maybe 10 yards and then all of a sudden, bang, those defensive backs are right in the hole. Will White is the guy that made the play. But it's, it's, just, it's just how incredibly fast these guys are. That's why they were the third best defensive unit in the nation. Conflict. As only Lewis in the backfield on third and almost 15. Conklin with a pump face. He won't be able to run for it. He'll be way short of the first down. And a flag goes down at the end of the play. Penalty flag down at the end of the play. Was it an illegal man downfield, possibly? Well, it doesn't make any difference. It's a running play. Conklin with a pump face. Clip.
Now you just take take a look at you watch your outside coverages, and now you're looking at linebackers. That's Miles number 98. They just knock on the offense. Riley out of run. bounds. He cannot come back in and catch the ball. Fourth down. That is one way to take him out of the play completely. Godfrey Miles forcing out the wide receiver. And the Gators ready to get it back. Stacy Simmons is going back for the punt. Channing Wiles in for the University of Washington, the junior from Lacey. A 38-yard average so far this season. This is what's frustrating for a coach. You get an onside kick to get the ball in great field position, and you can't move it. High snap. Good, good grab by Wiles. Fair catch called for, and Simmons has it. The senior from Clearwater takes it in cleanly at the 15-yard line. Tomorrow, don't forget to join NBC Sports for the AFC Wild Card game. It all starts at 3.30 Eastern with NFL Live, so join Bob Costas. He'll bring you up to date on all the late-breaking news. O.J. Simpson is going to be taking a look at the bitter feud that still exists between Houston head coach Jerry Glanville and Pittsburgh head coach Chuck Knoll. O.J. will be talking to both of the head coaches before the game. So join Bob Costas and O.J. Simpson. The AFC Wild Card game. First and 10 give. Emmett Smith on the carry. Only a yard to the 16-yard line. That's one way to stop Emmett Smith. Keep the Florida offense off the field. And that's what Washington has done so far with 29 seconds. And counting left in the first quarter. The big thing, though, is, is his ability to cut back. And you can't not over-pursue Emmett Smith. Smith and Smith in the backfield. And Cedric and Emmett. Douglas in trouble on his way down. First one that was in there was the linebacker. Travis Richardson. Yes. Travis Richardson actually to the defensive tackle. And then Martin Harrison cleaned up with the sack. That's the final play of the first quarter. A sack for the Huskies. And the first 15 minutes of play dominated by Washington. But a great week for Don James and his Washington Huskies in Anaheim, California. Mickey and Minnie, ambassadors at Disneyland. Don told us yesterday they've been here since the 18th. For the last 12 days, they have had the time of their life. And are having the time of their life this Saturday afternoon. <laughs> so far, they have owned the line of scrimmage, winning the War of the Trenches quite easily at a 17-7 lead. Of the Florida Gators, Florida in a hole, back of their own seven-yard line, where they're looking at a third and 18. Loss of nine on that last play of the first quarter. The sack of Donald Douglas by Travis Richardson. He is changing the play, audibleizing, and fumbles it. Has to run it on his own. Does a good job just to get the ball. And is down outside of the eight-yard line. For the first 15 minutes, the Washington Huskies have done exactly what they wanted to do. And that's, number one, take Emmett Smith out of the ball game. Of course, Florida has not had the ball that many times. But you take a look at, at, at the stats. Rushing the ball, 63 yards. You know, and that's on the quarterback touchdown play. Other than that, they have done nothing. Charles Mincy waiting for the punt, and it's off the side of the foot of Hank Roan. It's outside of the 30, where it's touched by the back of a leg of one of the Gators. And let's see where they finally put it down. They will mark it right outside of the 30 at the 32-yard line. Roan almost missed the ball, and the reason he did it is he picked his head up, and he's looking at the guy coming at him instead of looking at the football, and he almost missed it. Watch this. Now he's mad at him. Yeah, he's going to talk to himself a little bit. Uh oh You're lucky one of your other players didn't hit you. <laughs> Only had a 36-yard average on the year. So. But, Joe, when, when you're watching him, he's looking... And I'm telling you, he throws the ball out. He's looking up instead of down at the football and almost missed the ball. Huskies get it in Gator territory, already leading by 10. To the Florida 32. Greg Lewis picking his way. Waits for the hole to open and gets close to five. He's down to the 27-yard line. Brad Culpepper tripping him up the nose tackle. The sophomore from Tallahassee was named to the SEC academic honor roll the last two years for the Florida Gators. 
Florida Gator program really prides itself on members of the team that are on that academic honor roll. They've got a great deal of tradition. The one thing Florida has to do with this small defensive line is that the two inside linebackers, Moore and, and Odom, they have to be extremely active. Throwing on first down, Andre Riley has it. He's got a big cushion, and he's got a first down. A lot of room again. They're working with Scavella, and I wonder if there was an injury to Richard Fain, the cornerback, on that long pass play, because Scavella is in there now, a freshman from Miami. Scavella, Scavella is in there, but, but just take a look at how far they're off. There's just no way that that inside linebacker can get out to the wide receiver to stop the play. Now, I know he has inside responsibility from the inside out, but the corner has got to get up, and that's Scavella. He's got to get up on that wide receiver. You cannot give him that much room. Now, take a look at this spread on the outside, Joe. There's, they're wide open. There's nobody on the wide receiver. They lay off the far side of the field. The wide receiver setting up over there, and Ames was open, but it was overthrown by Kerry Conklin. Pat Moore, the inside linebacker, was trying to keep up with Ames. They shut it down. And if Conklin looks on the other side to Riley, number 23, there wasn't a man within 20 yards of Riley. And it goes back to what some of the Husky coaches were saying about Kerry Conklin. Maybe that extra year would have been beneficial in that instance, looking off the primary and looking at second and third options. Because he did have Andre Riley wide open, the senior from San Jose. Instead, though, second and ten. The 21-yard line. Flags on the play. Huge hole for Greg Lewis. He's close to a first down. Inside the 11. The play stands. He's got a first down. It goes against Washington. They have movement. It is going to be a penalty against the Washington Huskies. We saw those numbers at the end of the first quarter. Washington had 211 yards of total offense. Florida on the season has only given up 242 a game. They are a tough, aggressive I mean, illegal shift on the offense, five-yard penalty, still second down. But it isn't as amazing when we were talking to Gary Darnell about, you know, and different players in the SEC. He says, you don't see the huge players like you do out, like Washington has. They're not used to playing against these guys. They are quick. But unless the two inside linebackers get more active, they can run the ball up and down the field. Penalty marks it off five yards. Back outside of the 26, bringing up a second and 15. As they were working on Donald Douglas's equipment on the sideline. Receiver is available. Mario Bailey has it inside the 20, but a flag is down again. The offensive backfield of the Huskies. Bailey is down to the 17-yard line. They got a holding on Malamala, number 70. He's the right tackle, the sophomore from Hawaii. That's right. They don't give the numbers in, in college. Holding on the offense. Number seven. Ten-yard penalty. Still second down. I'm just trying to help him out. Did you see that shot on the sidelines of Donald Douglas? They're trying to patch his pants. <laughs> the other quarterback is standing there next to him, and he's, he's trying to warm up. That's Lex Smith. <laughs> to the right of your screen, you'll see the holding. And it's almost two takedowns they could have called either one second straight penalty against the Huskies of Washington and they're about to waste superb field position with 1250 left in the first half Washington leading Florida 17 to 7 ball now at the 36 where it's second and 25 Conklin has trips to the same side on the play action looks to that side it's batted down at the line and just over the fingertips of Mark Murray as Huey Richardson got the ball Mark Murray the left tackle almost got the interception. Huey Richardson, a big one. And Murray almost collecting the loose one. Richardson at 6'5", and only a junior. Here he comes on the left-hand side of your screen. Right there, bang, and knocks the ball down. And that's the, one, the first thing you... <laughs> he's, <laughs> he's having some fun. He's going to tire himself out. He set a Gators single season record with 12 and a half sacks this year. Conklin with a pump fake. Going deep. He's got a man. Andre Riley can't hang on. Riley was free once again, though, working on Richard Fain, the cornerback on that side, who was considered one of the top five corners of the country. And I was talking to Dick Steinberg, who's here today at the game at Freedom Bowl 6, and he said Fain is one of the Gators he is looking at. 
All right, when you take a look at up here, Joel, here is Fain and here is Bartley, and what they're going to try to do is hit in between because Fain has short, Bartley has deep outside. Let's watch it. And there's Fain. He's got him short. And then Bartley trying to get over there. If that passes on target, it's touchdown. Punting situation for Channing Wiles. He'll try to angle it towards the sideline. The tail's over the head. And is it out of bounds? Yes, at the one-yard line. Terrence Barber, the lone gator back there, calling for the fair catch as it sailed over his head. A 35-yard punt. Perfect placement by Channing Wiles, the junior from Lacey, Washington. So the special teams coming through, and that has always been one of the strong suits of Don James' teams. Be right back to Anaheim with the Huskies in control. The Freedom Bowl is brought to you by today's truck, Chevrolet. Nobody's winning like the heartbeat of America. By new dandruff control, Perk Plus. Dandruff shampoo plus complete conditioner in one. And by Alamo. There are over 4 million miles of roads in America, and with Alamo, all the miles are free. Donald Douglas, the quarterback for the Gators, just went into the locker room. He's not injured. He simply has a blowout in the back of his pants. They couldn't patch it. So Lex Smith is on the field. He'll take over the next series for Florida. <laughs> Joel? Thank you, Jimmy. I like that terminology. I, I thought we were at the auto races. He had a blowout. <laughs> That's Jimmy Cephalo. I'm Joel Myers, Paul McGuire, alongside of the booth. As we welcome you back to beautiful Anaheim, California, on a perfect day. 70 degrees of kickoff, and the Florida Gators down by 10, 17 to 7. What a shock this is because the Florida defensive unit, such a good one for Gary Darnell and Galen Hall this year. They had only given up 28 points in the first quarter all year long. That's over 11 games in the first quarter. They gave up 17 to Washington in the first quarter of this Freedom Bowl. Gators have it back, but once again in a hole at their own one-yard line. Their last drive started at their own 15-yard line, as you can see. They did not enjoy the greatest field position. Emmett Smith tripped up. Travis Richardson getting over there, and James Clifford, the one down Emmett around Smith. his ankles, the inside linebacker, the sophomore from Seattle. Clifford, an honorable mention, all Pac-10 performer, reading it so well on that play. It's only a gain of a yard for Emmett Smith. Uh, Daryl pa Perry, number 34, is the fullback, or was the fullback on that last play, and we haven't seen Cedric Smith in the last two series. Now, is he in there? No, that's, that, that's Perry. Once again, Lex Smith is the quarterback, the redshirt freshman, out of the backfield. Nothing available again. Emmett Smith put down by the free safety was coming up on the run support. Eugene Burkhalter, when we talked to Lilo Lang after that hit by Burkhalter, we talked to Lilo Lang. He said, we always look for the run first. This is nothing different for the Husky defensive unit. They love to play the run support. Well, and it gives you an idea how well they play it. You know, Perry is coming up in the block. Now, watch. He gets trapped by his own man, can't get out to get a block, and they just stuff to the inside, and then the safeties are filling. There's no place to go. Emmett Smith on the sideline on third and long out of his own end zone. Off the fingertips. Is it intercepted? No. Burke Halter almost had it. They were looking for the tight end, Harvey Thomas. I mean, this is, this is not the fault of the quarterback. I can tell you that right now, Lex Smith. The tight end, Thomas, is the guy that bobbles the ball. Watch it. The ball hits him in his hands. He goes up, and Burkholder almost has the play. He might have made the interception if Lilo Lang didn't bump into him. Washington Huskies already have seven blocks on the season. Roan has it blocked in the end zone. Huskies recover. Touchdown, Washington. Chico Braley was the first one. He was the one who got in there on the block. And recovering it for the touchdown, Jaime Fields, the reserve rover back. We were just talking about Don James in his tenure at Washington. In his 15 years, he has always prided himself on great special teams, and it pays off. I think there could have been more than one guy that had been able to block that ball, but Chico Braley was the guy that got there, number 39. I mean, they you're, you're absolutely right. They just they went in. Rome, you took too many steps and too much time. 
he's got a little, little pouch on him. It looks like maybe when I was a punter. One punter to the next. <laughs> you know it. McCallum in for the point after. Drills it for the upright. And everything going to the direction of the team from the Pacific 10 Conference, the Washington Huskies. Now look at Fraley. There's just not enough people to block. And when you're a three-step kicker, you've got to take a half step and, and just get it out of there. All right, take a look at it. It's going to be the third guy in right here, Chico Fraley. But here's the punter right here. Watch where he ends up kicking the ball. It'll be in this area. He takes three steps. He should have it blocked. Here it comes. He's going to end up in the middle of the S to punt the ball. And you cannot take that many steps in the end zone. Purpose is to get the ball off as quick as possible. The young man that blocked it, Chico Fraley, the inside linebacker from right here in Southern California. Roland Height. Hank Roan, the putter. Tough day so far. The Roan and the Gators. The Callum line drives it back to Stacy Simmons at the four-yard line. They run the reverse. He gets it to Lomack. Lomack with blockers out in front. Turns it up to the 44 near the 45-yard line where he's hit by Jaime Fields, the young man that recovered that block punt for the touchdown. A 40-yard return. A little razzle-dazzle from the Florida Gators. They need something to spark the offensive unit. All right, Joel, looking at it from the end zone. Now watch, here's the reverse here. It's just a flip back, but you can see the wall up. You got the Huskies are on the ground. Now the blocking downfield was a little bit too soon. If the, if the blockers would have waited a little bit longer to make their block, then Lomax would have been able to break it. Lex Smith stays in there at quarterback in place of Donald Douglas and rifles it wide of his intended target, Terrence Barber. Smith, a redshirt freshman from Dave City, Florida. He was the Tampa area's high school player of the year in 1986. Well, they told us that both of these quarterbacks would play equally. Douglas, because of pants being ripped he went out but he looked like he was on target with most of his passes that he threw it's got to be so difficult for Florida now because they don't have a balanced attack they relied on the run so much this year now a lot of pressure on the two freshman quarterbacks they keep Daryl Perry in the backfield and the eye with Smith is setting up the screen Emmett Smith has it but he doesn't have any blockers Eugene Burkhalter coming up and reading it out of the secondary it's complete up to the 49-yard line. Only a gain of five on the reception. Well, the, the big problem is if you're going to run a screen, and because Washington, the team, so heavily on Emmett Smith, you just don't run the screen to him. I mean, he draws the crowd with or without the ball. And that time, just the linebackers just sat in there and waited for the play to develop and then made the tackle. Florida offensive unit got two first downs on their first two plays of the day, but they have yet to pick up a first down since. And now it's third and five, going deep, and they don't have a jam. They wanted Lomax every step of the way, though. Lilo Lang was with them, and that's another young man. Uh, Dick Steinberg, the new general manager of the New York Jets, told me he came out to see Lilo Lang, the senior from Jordan High School in Los Angeles, so a homecoming for Lang and so many of the Washington Huskies. Lomax didn't have a chance at that one, but Lilo Lang, like a number of Huskies, right here, in the Los Angeles area. They recruit heavily in Southern California. Always have under Don James. Roan into punt it to Charles Mincy. Wobbles out another short one. Mincy will take it on one hop at the 10-yard line. Good job, though, by Mincy. They get a piece of it. Take it back near the 13. Be right back to Anaheim with Washington leading by 17. On a sunny day in Southern California, welcome back once again to Freedom Bowl number six at Anaheim Stadium. Along with Paul McGuire, I'm Joel Myers. Emmett Smith still not a factor so far for the Florida Gators. In Washington, they're really only slowing themselves down by penalty. Yeah, that's it. I mean, they, uh, Florida can't do much. And the thing we're really talking about is the two inside linebackers. They really have to be more active. They have to read the play sooner and get to the hole quicker. Because Washington, uh, on the offensive line, they're staying with their blocks. The one thing that they knew they had to do, and once you get to the secondary, now you got defensive backs making tackles. This is the deepest field position for Conklin and the Huskies. 
to start a drive in their own territory today. Back at the 11 yard line. Greg Lewis gets the call. Still not much of a hole, but he slithers his way near the 15, close to the 16 yard line. Mark Brunel now in there, a new quarterback in there for the Washington Huskies, a redshirt freshman from Santa Maria, California. So a change to Don James. We also have a new center. Jeff Chandler's in the ball game. Call it a gain of four for Lewis, bringing up a second and six at the 15-yard line. 9.45 left in the first half as Bailey goes in motion. Greg Lewis, big hole into the secondary for a first down. The offensive line doing a number once again on that defensive front three of the Florida Gators. Greg Lewis with the carry out to the 27. All right, Joel, listen to the thing I'm talking about. Now, take a look at the two inside linebackers. When you look at the inside linebackers, Baldwin and Odom, they are just not making the play where they're supposed to be. They have to get to the hole. There is nothing wrong with Kerry Conklin. They just wanted to give the redshirt freshman an opportunity to play this afternoon with a 17-point lead already in the first half. He's getting his chance. First and 10. Quick one for Greg Lewis. Nice reception on a high throw out to the 35. Don James that took a great run at the University of Washington. And what a tough conference he's in as well in the Pac-10 with UCLA and USC, both Arizona schools. And Rich Brooks doing a great job at the University of Oregon. But Don James' program has been the most dominant in the decade of the 80s. Even more wins than the Bruins and the Trojans. Huskies have never had a losing season in the decade. Murray jumping off. Or check that. Yes, it was Murray jumping off. Flash into the air. On second and short, Huskies will take it and they'll get a first down. Now just remember, it's, just, it's the same in pros in college. You can get, go offside, but as long as you get back onside and don't make any contact. But Murray couldn't get back. He got too far across. Offside. On the defense, five-yard penalty. That will give it a first down. Talk about scrambling. Watch the left of your screen. You'll see Murray. <laughs> Whoop, wait, whoa, yo. <laughs> he can't get back. They're fast up front for Florida, but they're not that fast. <laughs> no, no, that's true. Brunel, the backup quarterback, has only attempted 12 passes the entire season. So that completion to Lewis was his 13th of the year. First and 10 from the 40-yard line. Pump fake in the south park goes to Lewis. He's got great hands. Grab that one around his knees, and it was thrown even a little bit behind him, but still got a couple of yards on the carry or the reception. Look at his hands. <laughs> his fingers. Each one of his fingers are a foot long. We talked about it. We lost our hands when we shook his hand yesterday in a meeting with the entertaining young running back, Greg Lewis from the University of Washington. Not a lot of people have talked about him, but 1,100 yards on the season, third best in the Pac-10. Got a, what is it, a size 14 ring, I think he mentioned to us. Nice. I mean, they're not long, long and skinny. In and out of the hands of Andre Riley on the quick out. They were working on Bartley. Or, yes, it was B. Bartley, the strong safety. Riley with so much success already this afternoon. He's been available. Now the Huskies trying to move the ball from there own 11 yard line with their backup quarterback in there that was a that was a nice pass by brunel but the only problem is it would have been only good for about a yard anyway brings up a third and long third and seven trips to the wide side of the field and don't forget the hash marks much wider in the college game than the nfl pressure on the quarterback available over the middle mario bailey couldn't hang on to it he was being hit at the same time by the free safety, Will White. Good timing by the redshirt freshman from Tallahassee. Well, Brunel, you've got, to, you've got to understand something. When their first guy isn't there, and now you have to look. He was looking for the tight end to his right. Now watch this. When he looks to his right, he's not there. Now you come back. You're going to take some heat, and you're going to take a pounding. And that time he was hit by Paul. Just drilled him right after he threw the ball. Channing Wiles in to punt it away. That same pair back Barber and Simmons to Florida. Standing back near the 20, 25 yard line. Punter <laughs> was hit, but there was no flag. 
It was grabbed by the Huskies at the 33 of the Gators. Don't forget tomorrow the big AFC wild card game. It all starts at 3.30 Eastern. With Bob Costas in NFL Live. O.J. Simpson is going to have an opportunity, and he's going to be talking with two coaches that you don't want to invite to the same party. Chuck Knoll and Jerry Glanville. So it's in the House of Pain, the surprising Pittsburgh Steelers taking on the Houston Oilers in the AFC wild card game. Join Bob Costas and O.J. Simpson. That's 3.30 Eastern with NFL Live. Also, Ralph Wiley and Bobby Beathard. Lex Smith stays in there at quarterback. Having problems while fixing that blowout, as Jimmy Cepelo called it. Oh. Lilo Lang was defending on the play. He was looking for Ernie Mills, the wide receiver on the far side. Mills left himself so exposed because of the pass off the mark. Now you go into the quarterback and you say, listen, pal, <laughs> if you're going to throw that ball, you better throw it down low where I can catch it. Because Mills, you're going to get your receiver killed. Lilo Lang, watch what he does. Look where Mills has to go. And you talk, you are right. Exposed. You're going to get a guy hurt out there. You throw it that high, you go get it. Gators trying to play catch up. Working with two freshman quarterbacks. It's been well documented. They lost their two starting quarterbacks earlier this year. They were both suspended. Emmett Smith finally getting to the outside, bumped out of bounds at the 40-yard line. It's his longest game of the day, seven yards on the carry. Lang and Burkhalter combining on the stop. I'm just so glad that he doesn't have great speed. Watch this. Here, here he comes. That's Perry going out, just gets a piece of the linebacker, and that's all he really has to do. And when he does that, then Emmett Smith goes upfield, and he picks up, what, seven or eight on seven yards on the play. Gary Darnell was telling us, the head coach of the Gators, that Smith isn't lightning fast. He's not going to win many wind sprints, but he's got short distance speed. Seems to just glide along and hit people, deliver a blow, and then bounce right off. I'm sorry, but four, five, and a 40 is fast. Smith can't handle the pick. He gets it back, though, but he's still way short of the first down. Just playing good hands to come up with that. Aaron Toss. Martin Harrison in on the hit for the Huskies. Emmett is upset because if had he been able to get the toss, he would have been able to get the first down. When you talk about total concentration, that ball's thrown out in front of him. He gets a good bounce. It comes right back up into his hands, and he picked up a yard on the play is all. So after starting with it at their own 33, which so far has been good field position for the Gators, they failed to pick up a first down. Roan almost has it blocked again. Mincy waiting for it, takes it to the 27. He's got room up the middle. Oh, closes in a hurry, though. You felt that up here, Paul. At the 34-yard line, 32-yard punt, the seven-yard return. And Daryl Perry, the first one down there to make the hit for the Gators. Emmett Smith controlled so far as we return to Anaheim. A one-sided affair so far in Freedom Bowl number six as the Huskies of Washington dominating the Florida Gators, leading by 17 with 626 left in the first half. And Welcome back once again, Joel Myers, along with Paul McGuire and Jimmy Cephalo. Sun Dodge Denali, the Husky mascot. It's got to be an extremely warm day for him. 70 degrees at kickoff. First and 10 for the Huskies, their own 34-yard line. And Conklin's back in their quarterback. There's his favorite target this year, Andre Riley. Don't tell Andre he was out of bounds. He's trying to get more. He took it to the 42-yard line, though. B. Bartley, the strong safety, defending on the play. I'll tell you, one of the most active players on this field for Florida is Polk, number 99, and he's a linebacker. Watch this. There goes Riley. He'd already stepped out of bounds, but here's the guy at the end of the play, and he's the guy on, on when, they're, when Washington is punting, he took the up back back in to the kicker. This has been the mode of operation for the most part this afternoon for Washington. Second and short. Second and two with the ball to the 42. There's the fullback. Darius Turner for the first down. He's up to the 46-yard line. Tim Polk, the inside linebacker, in on that hit. The sophomore from Miami. He Turner is getting that start. Mentioned it earlier in case you just joined us. James Compton, their starting fullback, who had such a successful year out of Bandera, Texas, injured. If they were to play next week, Don James told us he probably could go, but they didn't want to risk it. Lewis, the lone one of the backfield now on first and ten. This is a new offense for the Huskies this year, the single set formation. And they like to use it, flag down, and it batted down. The linebacker getting out of the pass coverage as they wanted to go to Mario Bailey. <laughs> you know, if, if you look over at Washington's bench, 
See, Florida only dressed 71 guys for this game. But Washington, they have 120. <laughs> Offside on the defense, five-yard penalty, still first down. When you look at that bench, I mean, it's just people upon people. And there are guys down there, there are three guys wearing the same jer jersey. Don James told us they had problems early in the year with double numbers. They were flagged a couple of times on special teams. Because double numbers can't be on the field at the same time. Exactly that. Don James told us also that he could have brought more players. They have 150 in the program. <laughs> they have a great walk-on system, just like the Florida Gators do, as Greg Lewis takes it on first and five after the five-yard mark-off against the Gators. Gets a yard. One of the few times today the Gators have been able to really slow down Lewis. He's down to the 47-yard line. Five and a half minutes left in the first half. A 24-7 lead for Washington. Lewis with 14 carries, total of 63 yards so far. Comes in averaging 100 yards a game over the first 11. Three wide receivers setting up for Conklin to the same side on second and short. Quick hitter. Here goes to Mario Bailey. They can do that all day if they give them that much room in the line of scrimmage. Bailey with a first down to the 34-yard line. You talk about a great read by Conklin. What happened that time? Tim Polk, who was a linebacker, he cheats inside. And when he cheats inside, here he, here, here he comes right here. This is Polk. Instead of being out here where he belongs, he cheats inside the blitz. And as soon as they read that, Conklin hits on the outside. Watch this. There's the hole. Huge seam in the coverage. First down at the 34. Another quick one. The out is complete to Orlando McKay. Hopefully he's not out of it after that shot he just took. Gain is down to the 33-yard line. Cavella closing quickly. Scavella in there right now working the corner in place of the senior from Pensacola, Kerry Watkins. Scavella, the freshman from Miami. We're watching a very balanced attack. What we expected, though, from the Washington Huskies. So far, 43 plays, 21 rushes, and 22 passes. And, and basically, they've stopped themselves with penalties. Conklin throwing on second and eight. The back, that's the fullback Turner. Inside the 30, barely tripped up. Close to the 27-yard line. Pat Moore getting him around the ankles, the inside linebacker. Joel, Greg Lewis came out of the backfield and ran down the sidelines, and no one covered him. He went back by the bench to let him know that he was open. I mean, <laughs> there wasn't a soul near him. He went in motion, came out of the backfield, and nobody went with him. Here's Lewis. Now, just, just take a look on the, top of, on the top of your screen. You can see him coming out of the backfield. Now watch what happens. See him standing down there? Nobody covered him. Lewis got what he wanted. The reception and the first down with extra effort. He called it, Paul. He went back in and said, give me the ball. He's got it to the 23-yard line on the third down completion. It was third and three. Everything happening so fast for this Husky offensive unit. It is happening. That time they just put Lewis, they put three receivers to one side and put Lewis in the slot. And what Conklin is doing is he's picking out the receiver where the defensive back is off of him more than six yards. Husky's driving again with a 17-point lead. Oh, Greg Lewis stacked up. Gets a yard on the carry to the 22. Richardson in on the tackle. The outstanding outside linebacker, the junior from Atlanta for the Florida Gators. And coming up at halftime, a report on tomorrow's matchup between the Steelers and the Oilers, the AFC wildcard game. Story on Lou Holtz and the comments he made to his team as we'll eavesdrop with the rest of the nation. And also entertainment from the Washington Husky marching band. Conkle with a pump fake, has a man in the end zone, batted away from Orlando McKay. Scavella got back in time. Conklin just did not put enough zip on this ball and get it deep enough because McKay had Scavella beat. And Scavella comes up and makes the play. Knows he can't intercept it. All he wants to do is knock it down. But look at the recovery by Scavella. Can't play defense any better than that. Third and long, third and nine now. Orlando McKay. 
fourth on the team with 30 catches this year. Third and nine from the 22. Pocket holds up for Conklin. Plenty of time. Has a receiver who takes quite a pop. Andre Riley. He's got enough for the first down to the 13-yard line. He's right at the first down marker, but I believe the spot will give it to him. Richard Payne delivered the shot. Oh, no, I'm talking about headache. I mean a major, major headache. The measurement now to see if the Huskies did pick up enough for the first down. Riley, our early leader now for our Medal of Honor this afternoon after the hit he just <laughs> took. So you have it by the nose of the football. Riley's tough. Riley's tough. Just barely got it. I mean, just to hold on to the ball. I'm not talking about getting the first down. Watch this hit by Fain. Bang, bang. And that's a clothesline. And look where he's hit at the 12-yard line. So the spot was back at the 13. They still get the first down, though, by the nose of the football. Richard Fain, scouts consider him to be one of the top five cornerbacks in the country. He's a junior from Fort Myers. Four interceptions so far on the season. First and ten give goes to Greg Lewis. They finally penetrated the offensive line of the Washington Huskies. That's one of the few times, maybe the only time we've seen so far in the first half, where they got into the backfield. The guy that really made the play was Culpepper. He got into the offensive lineman and slowed down Lewis. And then Richardson is the guy that makes the play. But Culpepper is the, is the man that made the initial move. It's got a feel for those guys, Paul. They've been on the field the entire first half. What did the coach say? What did the coach say? Couldn't win if his defense was on the field too much. He just said Washington will win the football game. Second and 10 from the 13-yard line. Lewis in motion. Conklin with plenty of time for the tight end. Big Phil Ames inside the 10 to the 9-yard line. Don James with the perfect game plan. Balanced attack. Quick hitters against an incredibly quick defensive unit. And I think Florida at the halftime, they're going to have to make a defensive adjustment and gamble a little bit. I mean, they're they're way behind in this ball game, 24 to 7. Possibly going to be more before the half, but they've got to gamble by that. Bring the corners up. Under 50 seconds left in the half. On third and seven from just inside the 10, did they use too much time? No, they didn't. There's still three seconds left of the play clock. Procedure against Washington. But Joe, when you see Andre Riley, when he splits out, and I know there's three wide receivers to that side, McKay's out there along with him. When they split him out, the corner of Florida is standing on the goal line. Now the ball is at the nine yard line. You're giving a, almost a 10 yard cushion. Now this time, it's McKay that goes out along with Riley. Now when you take a look at it, Ed Bailey's out there. Now they now they moved up. But look at the middle now. Third and 11. From outside of the 15 into the end zone. And incomplete. He wanted Mario Bailey. Tied up a little bit around the goal line. That was the 51st offensive play of the first half for the Washington Huskies. Too much. And, you know, Jerry Darnell, I mean, he was very honest with us when he said it. He said there's just no way, as, as big as they are, and as, as, as small as we are, that if we just stay on the field with our defense, they have to beat us. It'll be a 32-yard field goal attempt coming up for John McCallum. He's already hit a 21-yarder this afternoon. He's got plenty of distance. He's also got the direction. And the Huskies have three more points. 18 seconds remain in the first half, a dismal first half. If you're a Florida Gator fan, and Washington now has increased their lead to 20. It's the Huskies 27, and the Gators 7. It all starts at 1 o'clock Eastern time on Championship Monday with Bob Costas and O.J. Simpson, live at the Orange Bowl. So our first bowl game will be the Hall of Fame Bowl, followed by the Fiesta Bowl, then the battle for number one. Colorado and Notre Dame, a subject that Paul and I will be discussing at halftime as we show you footage of his comments by Lou Holtz yesterday. Actually, Thursday, and then we'll get 
comments from Bill McCartney and Lou Holtz as well from yesterday, their reactions. But it's the matchup for number one. The Buffaloes of the Big Eight and the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame. We join Bob Costas and O.J. Simpson at 1 o'clock Eastern, live from the Orange Bowl for Championship Monday on NBC. Simmons will be back once again, along with Tony Lomack. The last time they fielded the kickoff, they went with a little razzle-dazzle reverse that worked for almost a 40-yard return. You've just joined us. The Huskies shocked the Gators midway through the first half with an onside kick and recovered it. Squib it. It'll get past the up men. Simmons gets a good hop, though, at the 12. He's down across the 25 to the 26-yard line. Shane Paakoa. First one down there on the Washington special teams. Lex Smith had to take over for the starter, Donald Douglas, after he had to make an equipment change and go into the locker room. And Lex Smith is going to be the quarterback once again. I would imagine they'll start Donald Douglas in the second half, but they, they, they told us that they were going to use both quarterbacks. They didn't decide until yesterday upon a starting quarterback. They decided they just wouldn't tell us. Smith for Tony Lomack hangs on to it across the 45. Out to the 46. 16-yard gain. You got time for one more play, and this is the one where you throw it into the end zone. Florida took a timeout. Florida Gators using the timeout. They still have two remaining in the first half. Now you take a look at this choice here when he hits Lomax. Excuse me, count the number of defensive guys downfield when you see this. Look where he throws the ball. He doesn't throw to the short man, he throws to Lomax. There's one, two, three. Perfect throw though. Gary Darnell told us as the Huskies gather with their coaching staff for this what should be, barring a penalty, the final play of the first half. Tolta Smith can really air it out. Yes. I'm looking at that bench over there. It looks like Subway, 5 o'clock in New York. <laughs> I've never seen so many people. 120 made the trip for the Huskies. A little over half that total for the Florida Gators. Well, the interesting thing about Washington, when you take a look at it, and... If you take a look at, at their offensive football team, Paul Koa, number 58, is a tackle on offense. Travis Richardson, number 58, is a defensive tackle when the defense is on the field. But it's not confusing. Not to you, it isn't. First and 10 for the 47. Smith needs some time. The pressure comes, and he will go down. A sack for the Huskies, an appropriate way to close out the first half as they dominated the first 30 minutes of play. Travis Richardson, second team all Pac-10 performer, getting to the quarterback for Washington. So we have reached halftime by 20 as they dominated the battle in the trenches. That huge offensive line opening things up for Greg Lewis consistently. Let's head downstairs now, check in once again with Jimmy Cephalo. All right, gentlemen, Coach Darnell, exactly what do you have to do to make adjustments to get back into the second half? Well, obviously, we've got to get something going on offense. And then, you know, the first thing, early in the game, obviously, mistakes, that sort of <coughs> penalties, uh, those sort of things got the game going. Right, we've hung in there. We're just our, our guys are a little bit small, and they're getting worn down, and we just got to keep the defense off the field for a little bit, get away, and we need to turn over. Defense, we haven't been able to create any kind of turnover. Who will you start in the second half, Smith or Douglas? If I go back with Donald in the second half and see if we can get something going, get out the edge to get them back off us. They don't have a defensive guy lined up deeper in six yards right now. We haven't seen Cedric uh, Smith very much. Is he ill or hurt or something? He, he, we were, were going to alternate people today. We knew it was going in there. We think both of them do equally well. I think they split time. All right, Coach, thanks very much. Best of luck in the second half. And we will return to Anaheim and the Freedom Ball right after these words and a message from your local station. It's halftime in Anaheim, California. The sixth annual Freedom Bowl in the Washington Huskies with a 27-7 lead over the Florida Gators. And Welcome back once again. A perfect day. 70 degrees at kickoff. I'm Joel Myers alongside Paul McGuire to beat the Florida Gators. You've got to take Emmett Smith out of the game. They've done that effectively. They haven't let the Gator offense stay on the field. 
when you saw Emmett Smith in that, that one play where they where they tossed and the ball was out in front of him, went down and got the ball and picked up a yard, the frustration when he came off the field, when you see a player start ripping his chin strap out of his helmet, sometimes you pull your lip out when you do that, but when you see a player do that, you could tell the frustration in Emmett Smith. I think he's frustrated not only with himself, but also with the offensive line, and, and also when you don't have the ball as many times as they've had it, you know, you just can't get Emmett into the ball game. And that's the only way they can get back into this ball game is get, give Emmett the ball. And right now in the second half, you'll see the Washington Huskies trying to dominate it on the ground, of course, with that massive offensive line, an offensive line like an NFL team. <laughs> yeah, they really do. And they're just pushing them all over the field. And again, the only thing the Washington Huskies have done to stop a drive is make mistakes themselves, and that's penalties. Tomorrow on NBC, it's the AFC wildcard game, the Steelers and the Oilers. For an update, let's go to Marv Albert. Thank you, Joe. We're at the training camp of the Houston Oilers, where earlier the Oilers wrapped up their final workout as they prepare for tomorrow's AFC wildcard matchup against the Pittsburgh Steelers. And, Bob, you take a look at these two ball clubs, and as they approach the game, they are at different ends of the emotional spectrum. Yeah, Mar, there's no question about that. Houston missed its opportunity again to win the AFC Central Division title. And for Pittsburgh, they just won their last three regular season games. They've won nine of the last 14. And when you consider where this football team began, the 1989 season, opening game, eight turnovers. First two games, they lose 92 to 10. So you have to give a great deal of credit, Marv, I believe, to Chuck Knoll, his coaching staff, and the players for sticking with it, certain amount of perseverance, and they finally turned this football team around it, and they're the hot team. Well, Houston is not. They were 9-5 and five at one point on a roll. Then two weeks ago, uh, they get thrashed by Cincinnati 61-7, and after the game, Sam Weiss lashes out at his very favorite coach, uh, Jerry Glanville, and then last week, the loss to Cleveland, a terribly disappointing loss, which uh, certainly affected the players' feelings. You know, after the game, uh, after it all set in, I was a little bit disappointed. That's how I felt at the time. But I think having a couple of days off at Christmas and then having a chance to look back and just focus in on what we still had at stake where a lot of other teams didn't have the opportunity to get in the playoffs, uh, I'm rejuvenated again and I'm ready to play. But I was pretty down after that last game because I felt like we should have won that game and we should have won our division. Jerry, earlier today you said your club is down, way down. Under those conditions... How do you get a team ready for the Pittsburgh Steelers for a playoff game? I think you just try to get so many players back each day. Maybe uh, one day uh, five come, maybe another day ten players come back, get up off the floor, and, and you hope that they're just about all back before you play. And those that are not, I think you can bring back by uh, uh, sparking uh, uh, an event during the game, making a big play, uh, and maybe we'll all get back and be where we normally are. Well, with the Oilers so down during the course of the week, Jerry Glanville decided to give the guys a day off from practice. Uh, do you think this will have any effect? Well, I like the idea. Separate them from the devastating loss last week to Cleveland. And I was struck by one thing, Marv. All the players that we talked to here at the Houston camp stated that they were depressed in the beginning of the week. And the extra day off did help. And that each day leading up to this game, they've gotten better psychologically. So I think they're ready. All right, what is the Trumpy breakdown for tomorrow's game? Well, I think it's simple for Pittsburgh. It always is simple for Pittsburgh, and that's run the ball. That's Tim Worley, get him up for the up the field. And for Houston, I think they need something emotionally uh, charged out there in the field to help them. Uh, a, a pass interception, a, a big run, a big hit on the special teams, or maybe even a fight. Oh, Bob's coming out for a little violence tomorrow. <laughs> You'll see it all. The AFC wild card game right here on NBC tomorrow afternoon, starting with NFL Live at 3.30 with Bob Costas and O.J. Simpson. Thank you, Marv Albert. We'll look to that matchup tomorrow right here on NBC, the AFC wildcard game, and one of the biggest surprises in the NFL, the Pittsburgh Steelers down at the Astrodome in the House of Pain. It's halftime as we continue from Anaheim, California, with the Washington Huskies leading the Florida Gators. And let's head back down to the sideline now. Jimmy Cephalo as the next president of the University of Florida. Go ahead, Jimmy. And that's correct, Joel. The incoming president of the University of Florida, Dr. John Lombardi. Doctor, uh, tell us... With all the questions surrounding the athletic program at the University of Florida, did that enter into your thinking when deciding to take the job at the Florida? Well, to tell you the truth, the uh, athletic situation at the University of Florida is uh, almost completely under control. And so uh, what really matters is the quality of the institution, which is absolutely first rate. That's what made the difference in wanting to come to the University of Florida. But the NCAA still has some questions concerning the university's athletic department. Uh, how is that investigation going? Well, that investigation is uh, going along. As you know, the University of Florida has been uh, very forthright and upfront in working with the NCAA to resolve these problems. 
and we see them well on the way to solution and we don't think they'll have a major impact on the uh, long-term health of the athletic program and we think the university is in exceptionally strong shape occasionally uh, we tend to blame the youngsters when there's problems at universities should the blame really fall on the ncaa are the uh, rules a little bit too stringent difficult to follow well i'm not sure the problem is the rules what happens is that whenever you have a large amount of money and a large amount of attention focused on a single activity there's a tremendous pressure and universities and the ncaa all need to help protect the students and the coaches against that kind of pressure and when there's a breakdown it's almost always because we haven't protected our athletes and our and our coaches uh, against the kind of external pressures that are brought to bear on them. What kind of items might you install at the University of Florida to ensure that the programs will be clean ones? Well, the key to all that is to get the right people in the supervisory roles as coaches, athletic directors, and then to work very closely with them on the programs with the students and with the, with the boosters and with the donors and all the people who are interested in college sports. Dr. Lombardi, thank you for joining us today. The best of luck at your new job. Thank you. And we will return to the Freedom Bowl, where Washington holds a commanding lead right after these messages from the Universities of Washington and the University of Florida. Seattle, home of the University of Washington, the leading institution of higher education in the Pacific Northwest and one of the great universities in America. More than 33,000 undergraduate, graduate, and professional students pursue courses of study in over 100 academic disciplines spread across 16 schools and colleges. Selected recently as one of the first spacecraft universities in the U.S. and as the site of the nation's only institute for nuclear theory, UW's distinguished faculty includes Nobel laureate Hans Demel and 31 members of the prestigious National Academy of Sciences. It is the most successful public university in the nation in competing for federal support for research and training. The University of Washington, where learning leads to a better tomorrow. We know that low birth weight infants have increased risk for mortality at the time of birth. Dr. Kathy Shiverick, a reproductive toxicologist in the biotechnology program at the University of Florida. If we can understand the mechanisms of developmental toxicity, I think we will come a long way in helping to understand how these babies can be helped at the time of birth. It touches me personally in my own family, my sister having a low birth weight baby. And the, uh, the human cost is tremendous, not to mention the, uh, the medical costs as well. I am thrilled with being a teacher. Teaching is not just a matter of transferring facts to students. It's helping them to understand complex issues. Uh, the real excitement in teaching comes with uh, helping students to gain new insights. And you can see it in, in their faces. The promise of research is being realized at the University of Florida. It's halftime at the Freedom Bowl with the Washington Huskies leading by 20. In Miami on Thursday afternoon, station KCNEC from Denver had the opportunity to eavesdrop on Lou Holtz. Let's look back on those comments to his Irish team. This is Red USA today. They ran a poll, and 49% felt Notre Dame should be number one. There's good and bad. Bad of it is Colorado feels that they're being played, and there's no beach sky high, and they don't get any respect and all that other nonsense. Tell you what, they're living the lie, they've been living the lie all year. They're expecting an outstanding football team, and they're going to see one. They're going to be the best Notre Dame fans, and we're going to whip them. I told you what we have to do in certain areas. I told you those five areas. I want to tell you one other, two other things. Number one, they're used to scoring a lot of points. They ain't playing any teams to take. They're used to scoring a lot of points. You've got to be patient on defense. Play our football game on offense. We want to control the football. All we want is a first down. First down and first down. Frustration will set in on Colorado's offense. By the middle of the third quarter, they will leave the game plan completely and will start grab back. Remember me telling you that. They are will not be patient. <laughs> Don't forget. 
weekend on Championship Monday. It all starts at 1 o'clock. The Hall of Fame Bowl to be followed by the Fiesta Bowl and then the Orange Bowl. Lou Holtz is fighting Irish of Notre Dame, taking on the Buffaloes of Colorado right now, the number one team in the nation. And a lot of controversy surrounding those comments by Lou Holtz. Both coaches were questioned about those remarks by Coach Holtz. Let's look back now. What Holtz had to say and also Bill McCartney yesterday. I don't want to do anything where it was a uh, where it would hurt or be derogatory to Colorado. If that's the way it's interpreted, I sincerely apologize. Lou didn't say those things for the benefit of Colorado. He said them within the confines of his squad, and I'm sure he never intended for anybody to air those comments, so I don't really have any comment on them. He may not have intended for those comments to be aired, but Bill McCartney, I guarantee you, will use them before the Orange Bowl on Monday night. And it happens. He may play it before the game, you're right, and at the intermission. It's halftime at the Freedom Bowl. Let's go down to the field as the Washington Husky Marching Band entertains. <laughs> Time continues in Southern California at Freedom Bowl number six with the Washington Huskies leading by 20. We'll be right back to look at halftime stats after these messages from your local station. Joe, let's play here. We'll give you an idea of what the offensive line of Washington has been doing to Florida. And offensively, they've controlled the line of scrimmage. Here's Lewis on the run. Good move by him. That's an eight-yard run. But that's been going on for the first half. Now we flip it and take a look at what the defense has been doing to Florida's offense. And there's just been absolutely no running room at all for Emmett Smith. So if the offense is not doing it and the defense is, if their offense is doing it, defense is doing it, why not the special teams? <laughs> take a look at this. That's for a touchdown. So everybody is helping out. That is their eighth block of the season. The punts, field goals, and extra points. One-sided affair. 290 yards of total offense to only 100. The Huskies with 18 first down to only three for the Gators. Emmett Smith, five carries, only 14 yards yeah, but in the, most, the first 30 minutes of play. Joel, the most amazing thing about that, that statistic is the rushing. Take a look at it for the Gators. It's 63 yards rushing. And Mr. Donald Douglas, number 12, the quarterback, ran for 60 of the 63. 
And let me remind everybody they had negative yardage from Lex Smith when he was sacked a couple of times, a negative 11. So that's how it comes to that total of 63. The Washington Huskies got on the board very early on a touchdown pass to Mario Bailey, a 21-yard strike from Kerry Conklin. Gators tied it up, though, on that 67-yard run, the third longest in Freedom Bowl history to tie it at seven. But that was the only highlight of the first half for the Florida Gators. But Callum giving the Washington Huskies a three-point lead. Conklin to his favorite target, Andre Riley. Huskies by 10. Then they went with an onside kick to get it back. Fraley blocked a punt after a change of possession. It was recovered by Jaime Fields for a touchdown and then a 32-yard field goal by McCallum. Two for two so far in the first half. That's Brunel, the backup quarterback who got in there for one series. All right, Joel, but the, you know, you and I rarely talk about time of possession. The only time the time of possession is meaningful is when you score with the, with the that time and you take a look at the, at Washington they have had the ball in the first 30 minutes almost 24 minutes of that time so Florida has not had the football and the one thing that Gary Darnell the coach of, of Florida told us if our defense is on the field Washington will win the ball game Donald Douglas ready to return now with the equipment change for the Florida Gators unfortunately for Gator fans though it took almost a full quarter to get things Worked out. 67 yards on that one run. Sacked. That's why it's down to 60. A great option quarterback, and they wanted to keep him in the Southwest Conference from Liberty, Texas. Houston wanted him. Texas A&M wanted him, but he decided to travel to Gainesville. One other thing about Florida, and if you're not being, you're not able to run the ball, that's 63 yards. In passing, they've only completed three passes out of nine for a total of 37 yards. Let's not forget about Greg Lewis for the Washington Huskies, who had 65 yards in the first half. Little chip shot from McCallum. Fair, Fair catch. catch is called for and taken in. Wisely at the 30-yard line. And with a heads-up play for the Florida Gators, it was Monty Grow, backup free safety. So the Gators get it to start the second half. A team that is not a real good catch-up team. They don't play well from behind because they don't have a balanced attack, but at least they have their starting quarterback returning now, Donald Douglas. First and 10 of the 30. Good protection for Douglas. Emmett Smith with the reception as he's out of bounds. At the 38-yard line, eight yards on the completion. That was not the primary target, but, you know, what better person did you want to get the, the ball in her hands, and that's Emmett Smith, and the moves that he makes after he catches the ball. He was looking off his first option downfield, so... And Emmett Smith with 58 individual Florida records, school records, already the school's all-time leading rusher. Smith on the quick toss. Can't get out of the backfield on second and a little bit better than three. Gets it to the 39. It'll remain third and three as James Clifford playing that gap defense that the Huskies like to work with. Made the hit. It looks like credits at the end of the Academy Awards when you talk about the career of Emmett Smith. 58 individual records. In his 24 collegiate starts, he's averaged 134 yards a game. He's gone over the 100-yard mark in 24 of his 30 starts. You can go on and on about Emmett Smith, and he deserves it. Stacy Simmons looking for the reception. We'll be back in a half hour after these Emmett Smith credits. <laughs> Lilo Lang that time on the coverage again, and boy, when he gets those receivers popped, sit, they're sitting straight up in the air like that, reaching for the ball. He knows what to do with them. Husky defense coming through because they did have that reception by Smith for seven yards on first down, but still Roan on second and short and third and short, they couldn't pick up the first down. Line drive out by Roan. Mincy will take it to the 30 on the run. And he's finally out of bounds inside the 35-yard line. Emmett Smith, 58 individual records for the Florida Gators.
He has talked about it on occasion, but he really does. We asked him to characterize his style of running. He goes, I don't like to talk about myself. You guys be the judge. Clip on the return. He really doesn't. He, you know, he, he just said, you know, the records are made to be broken. He has them, and someone is going to come along. I don't think in the, in the, the near future <laughs> to break them. Your lifetime or mine. <laughs> You're going to see the clip coming right here. Not, not only is there clipping, but there's also a little bit of holding. You're not allowed to, not allowed to tackle a defensive guy like that. They mark it off all the way back to the Washington 17-yard line. So once again, Florida only had the ball 58 seconds to start the second half. Now let's see what they do defensively because, Paul, they did not adjust well on the corners in particular. And especially the overall secondary, the passing attack of Washington. Greg Lewis hammers it out to the 19-yard line for a carry of two yards. Steve Tannen, who works on the Florida Radio Network, came over at halftime and said, maybe I have some eligibility left, the former New York Jet defensive back. <laughs> maybe. Look at here. Here comes Richardson, number 90, coming down the line of scrimmage. I mean, he's going to end up on the play. Between Richardson and Tim Paul. These two guys have been moving. Richardson is an outside linebacker, and Polk is an inside linebacker, but Richardson has line, lines up sometimes standing up, and then other times he'll get down. Darius Turner out of the backfield in motion on the delay give to Greg Lewis. Paul closed in a hurry. Gator defense so quick. That was Jerry Odom, the inside linebacker. He's one of the quickest. All right, Joel, we showed Richardson pursuing down the line. Now, this time, when you take a look at Richardson, he kind of comes upfield. And when he comes upfield, he takes himself out of the play. Watch this. The guard really doesn't have to block him because he's going after the quarterback. He went for the fake, and the guard really never had to do anything with him. Kirkland came out to block him. Richardson wasn't there, so he just waited for him to make his turn. Third and short, third and four. The ball at the 23. Lewis, the lone one to the backfield, will yeah. get it, and he's racked up in the backfield. Jerry Odom again in on the stop. The junior from Merritt Island, Florida. Great penetration. Again, I told you that in the first half when we're watching this football game, that Florida's defense, the inside linebackers, have to be active. Now, Odom's only 5'10", 210 pounds. But you've got to get the inside linebackers into the play. Now, watch what Odom does. He blitzes. He goes after the quarterback, sees the ball being handed off to Lewis. He just nails Lewis for a loss. Get him in the game. Channing Wiles in to punt it away for the Huskies inside his own 10-yard line. Almost three minutes have been played in the second half. Lomack and Simmons looking into the sun, almost blocked by the Gators, and a flag goes down as they got to Channing Wiles. Simmons calling for the fair catch, has it back at the 34. It was Big James Spear, the reserve outside linebacker. Wiles made sure, though, that the referee saw him going down. Yeah, Spear hits him, but, you know, this is something that, that you teach guys when you're coming in to block a punt. You cannot block a punt by hitting the punter in the leg. You've got to get the, about the two feet out in front of the, the ball. Defense, 15 yards, automatic. And you down. catch his leg. Now, Spear goes in. Instead of going in front of the ball, he goes directly at the punter. Where you want to be as a punter is a three-step kicker. He's going to move up, and with his leg extension, he comes out about to here. So this is the area when you come in, Joel, you come in from here, and you want to block it up in front here and not in his leg. Look at the difference. He's going straight at him. And a little bit of faking by the, by the kicker. First and ten now for the Huskies. Try to set up the screen for Lewis. Never developed. Out across the 36 to the 37-yard line. Give you a better idea. Let's pick up on the sounds of Channing Wilds. <laughs> he got hit. That's a little bit of acting when you get up and you kind of walk off. You just you wait for the flag to, to come out and then you can get up. Sounded like a fighter after a punch. <laughs> <laughs> He's all right. Give it your best shot. Second and nine. The 37. Pocket holding up for Conklin. Tight end. Grabbing it at the 41. Bill Ames Best going down to get it around his knees. Not a lot of touch on that pass. That was a more difficult catch than it really appeared to be because that was a 
fastball from Kerry Conklin, only five, six yards away from his intended target. Well, actually, Ames was not his primary target. They, they wanted to go back to the right, and, and Conklin is, is, has the ability to look at his primary target. If it's not there right now, because these are all timing patterns anyway, if it's not there now, he knows he has an outlet back to the other side, which is his tight end and also his roommate. Third and five situation for the Huskies. Pressure on Conklin. Going deep for Bailey. He had a couple of yards on the safety, Bartley. Yeah, but they had some deals up front, Joel, and Culpepper drilled Conklin just as he threw the football, and he didn't have time to set up and get the ball downfield to Bailey. You'll see the deal in, in, in the lineup. Culpepper breaks through. They don't, really don't block him, and then Conklin takes a shot. He sees Culpepper coming, knows he has to get rid of it a little bit sooner than he wanted to. Chuck Culpepper told us a couple of days ago they're going to have to try to stunt and twist and do a lot of different things up front because of that huge offensive line of the Washington Huskies. <laughs> Movement on the line. Flags into the air. Wiles gets off his best punt of the day. It's over the head. Of the Gators, Terrence Barber into the end zone, but it may be another first down. It was fourth and five. 59 yards on the punt. A net of 39. There's a situation again, I think, with Terrence Barber. I'm going to give him credit for having enough smarts to not go back inside the 10 to field the ball. But again, that sun is directly in his eyes. We were down on his field about this same time yesterday, and it's almost impossible to look when you're looking at the field here from, from left to right. Is it enough for the first down after the markoff on the penalty? They may need to bring in the chains for a measurement. Offside on the defense, five-yard penalty, first down. They've got it by the length of the football. I, I think I might have had to measure that, baby. <laughs> Gators are down by 20, and the Huskies grinding it out once again. They've had the ball for the last four minutes. First and 10 from their own 45. It's complete to Orlando McKay. Inside the 45 to the 42-yard line. All right, just to, let's just take a look up here in the middle of the field. You'll see the offside, Joel, that, that you know, just a mis mistakes and mistakes. Watch this. Oops, try to get back and just no way to do that. That's Paul, number 99. Just no way to get back. Didn't make any contact, but couldn't get back in time. I'm really impressed with, with Conklin, though, Joel, because he is really finding the wide receiver that's open. He is looking off his primary regularly as Greg Lewis is stuffed, but still because of the surge of that huge offensive line, he gets three yards with almost no hole whatsoever on the running play down to the 39-yard line. And what the one thing that, that Washington is doing is nothing fancy. They really don't have to run any draws at Florida, all they have to do is make contact with that defensive line. And once they do that, the penetration is with the offensive line pushing the defensive line back and staying with their blocks. Huskies control of the 39, second and seven, with Lewis out of the backfield. They double up the wide receivers to the wide side of the field. Conklin using the pump fake again, and it was deflected. So it looked like Conklin was on the bad end of some decision making on that one. It was on the bad end because again, in the first half we saw the same play where Lewis goes, number 20, Lewis goes in motion. When he goes in motion, the linebacker is up, but he stays there and all he had to do was hit Lewis going down the sideline because no one was near him. Scanning the secondary ball, I saw Lewis, I saw a couple of wide open receivers. He tried to force it down the middle though. Sometimes and it brings have, up a third and seven. Sometimes you have too much confidence in your arm. Trips to the wide side, Lewis in motion. Pressure on Conklin, still finds his receiver, but Bailey can't hang on. They're going to call this a catch and a fumble? No. no. They're saying incomplete. Odom came up with a loose ball, but it'll go as an incompletion, and the Huskies will, we think, punt it away. Look, look at this. Now you're going to see the hit. That's Fane. There's White. White is the guy that hits him. I mean, just take a look at this. And they got pressure on Conklin. 
the pass is a little high, but when you have people breathing down your neck, there's not a whole lot you can do about it. That's war number 45 as a man to put the heat on it. This is the third time now on this particular drive that the Huskies have tried to give the ball back to the Gators. Let's see if they'll take it this time. Roughing the kicker call and then an offside call. Mission accomplished. Sails over the head of Simmons into the end zone. And when we return to the Freedom Bowl in Anaheim, California, the Gators will have it back first and ten of their own 20 with 9.02 left in the third. The Freedom Bowl is brought to you by the new generation of Oldsmobile. Step into the future now at your Oldsmobile dealer. By the companies of the Prudential. Come to the Prudential and build your future on the rock. And by AT&T, the right choice. Main Street in Disneyland. Not far away from Anaheim Stadium. So we come back to Freedom Bowl number six. Joel Myers along with Paul McGuire and Jimmy Cephalo. Not a happy gator at this point. Almost looks like a stuffed gator. <laughs> well, whether he's stuffed or blown up. <laughs> First and ten for Florida. Their own 20-yard line. Florida's last seven series, last seven offensive possessions. They're only averaging 4.3 yards per crack at it. Donald Douglas going for the home run ball. Had Simmons just overshot his target and a penalty flag at the end of the play. They'll call it on Lilo Lang. I'll, I'll tell you what, this is not pass interference. Now, the only thing that I can see him call is close lining. Lilo Lang. Personal foul at the end of the play. At the end of the play. Because the ball was already gone. There was no chance of catching the football. Lilo Lang, I'll tell you what an excellent corner this young man is. Now, here he comes down. You just watch number six, and watch when he closes. Simmons is down there, but Lilo Lang, watch the ground that he closes here. See, the ball is gone, but they get a face mask. Lang is going to be playing in a couple of All-Star games. Definite pro potential. What did he say? How'd he got his name? Lilo? His mother put a bunch of names in a hat. <laughs> Didn't want Lee, no, so they went with Lilo. Emmett Smith, only six carries so far today for a total of 15 yards. Smith grabbed around the ankles after lunging for a couple to the 37-yard line. Dave Hoffman torpedoing that play. The inside linebacker, only a redshirt freshman from San Jose. Well, the toughest day so far this year for Emmett Smith was against Auburn, 86 yards. He's got 17 so far with 835 left in the third quarter. His high point of the season, 316 yards against New Mexico. That's a season for some backs. Not Emmett Smith, though. Second and eight. Douglas in trouble, and he's on his way down. Big Dennis Brown. Brown has been somewhat of a mystery in his Washington Husky career. A couple of years ago, he was their most valuable defensive player. He's really had an up-and-down career, though, in Seattle. Dennis Brown, the last time when, when, when Emma Smith ran the ball, he had the quarterback, and now he's going to come from the right of your screen. He just, nobody blocks him. He beats the guard, and then gets back to the outside. They just sent too many people. They were blitzing linebackers. When you do that, Martin Harrison, number 56, was blitzing. You got one man too many. Got him right at the line of scrimmage. Brings up a third and eight from the 37. Pressure on Douglas. Quick one to Simmons. Can't get away from the corner. Face mask again. Lilo Lang. And check that. It was not 25, but 20. Tony Lomack on the catch. Now, Lilo Lang has been covering all over the field. All right, two, two face mask deals now in a row. But he's the best cover guy. If I'm going to go, if I'm going to be on Florida's side and I'm going to throw the football, I'm not going to throw it at that guy. Go find somebody else. <laughs> Here comes Lomack. Now watch him close. During Here's the run, ball. Lilo Lang is watching it. Face mask. He gets the face mask again. Still third down. See, when I see a face mask and, and you get your hand in there and you hold on and you turn 
the player's head. I think that should be a 15-yard penalty. That's not incidental contact or accident. We rarely or see it called that penalty. way in the NFL, Paul. Each Sunday, it's usually only the five-yard variety. When you see the guy's head turn, when they're pulling his head, it should be 15. It was during the play, so it brings up third down once again. It was not a dead ball penalty. Douglas giving it to the fullback. Cedric Smith, second extra effort, gets him the first down as he was stopped short of the first down on third and less than a yard. He spins free to the 48-yard line. This what a blocker he is. He's a great blocker, and he only carries the ball an average of about three times a game. And when you watch it, Cedric Smith, I mean, it's, you talk about continuous effort because there's no place to go. Watch this. He stopped there, but watch his legs. His legs never stop, and that's why I don't call it second effort, Joel. It's continuous effort. It picks up the first down. First and 10 to the 48-yard line. Douglas on the short drop. Looking over the middle, almost intercepted. He went for Lomack. Or was it Emmett Smith out of the backfield? Yes, Emmett Smith who's complaining that they climbed his back on the play. Dana Hall was the cornerback on that side. Almost came up with a pick. Joe, what Washington is giving him is, is in the middle stuff short. But just take a look at here. Here comes Hall number five over the top. That's pass interference. That is pass interference because he hit Emmett Smith before the ball got there. <coughs> Got to get the call straight here. Dana Hall, the opposite side cornerback, the sophomore from Diamond Bar, California. It's now second and ten for Douglas. Pressure early. He's got room up the middle, though. There he goes. He's got a first down. He's jolted by the linebacker, Clifford, but not before he got about 15 yards. And all the way down to the 33, or make that the 37. These are these are tackles that, that, that defensive players from any part of it, whether it's a line, linebackers, defensive backs, they want. Watch what Clifford does. He's got a quarterback zeroed in and watch him snap. Bam! <laughs> I mean, there's no, the feet come up off the ground and you can't go any further because there's no traction down there. What a hit. First and 10 for the Gators. Deepest penetration to the second half. Down at the 38 yard line. Pressure from the backside. Douglas can't get away. They brought in Chico Fraley on the linebacker blitz. He had him by the jersey and waited for help. Well, Joel, they sent the whole nine yards this time. Fraley is the guy that has him, but the two guys on the backside, the left-hand side of the screen, there's not a guy blocked. Watch this. Here comes two defensive backs from the backside. Douglas had no chance whatsoever. Chico Fraley got the block of the punt that resulted. And a Husky touchdown as they recovered it. Jaime Fields did in the end zone. The sack is a big loss of 10 yards, bringing up a second and 20 all the way back at the 48-yard line. Douglas can't get it to his wide receiver, Ernie Mills. We talked to Emmett Smith before the game to find out about his future. Will he stay at the University of Florida or go in the NFL draft? I haven't thought much about the um, limitations put on the 1991 draft. Um, I haven't thought about it at all. The main thing I really need to do is when I do get the chance, I'm going to get back home, discuss things with my family, and weigh my pros and cons and see what, see what, which one weighs the most, and then probably determine the decision after that. Emmett, Emmett puts on some extra change that Mr. T starter set that he had on <laughs> for the interview. <laughs> Third and 20, Smith in motion out of the backfield, going for Lomack. Way overthrown. Lilo Lang again on the coverage. And right now, while the Gators granted on third and 20, they needed a, a big play. Earlier, they were looking for the long ball. At this point of the game, still five and a half minutes left in the third quarter. You would think they'd be looking for the intermediate routes. Now, granted, on the last one, they needed better than 20 yards. The intermediate routes and, and talking, especially in the middle of the field, are open. Mincy waiting for the punt from Roan, who saw pressure once again. Mincy from his own five-yard line. Just go down, Charles. Nowhere to go anyway. He's down at the six after a 42-yard punt by Hank Roan. We'll be right back to Anaheim with the Huskies leading by 20. Five minutes and 21 seconds left in the third quarter. As we return to Anaheim, California. Kickoff 70 degrees, cloudless sky. Had a perfect day if you're a Washington Husky fan. 
perfect day if you're in California, period. Huskies have it first and ten at their own six-yard line. They go with the fullback, Darius Turner, up to the eight. Man from the Sun Bowl, Texas A&M, coming from behind, but still not enough as they lose to Pittsburgh. And a three-point game. Pittsburgh has their new coach. It's been announced. Paul Hackett will be the coach of Pittsburgh. Let's see what that offensive line does once again. They've been blowing big holes open for Greg Lewis, and there's another good one. Out to the 14-yard line. Gain of six for Greg Lewis on third and long. Let's check in once again with Jimmy Seppolo on the sideline. Joel Kerry Watkins, number four, the defensive back from the University of Florida, has injured a thigh, and he will not be back in today's contest. He's out here on the sideline and will not return to the game. Okay, Jimmy, thank you. So that's the reason we've been watching Sam Scavello work that corner with Richard Fain on the other corner for the Florida Gators. I went up here watching Brostick, the center, number 60, on Culpepper, and that time he just he held him and turned him to 360. Yeah. Third and short, and Lewis met in the backfield. It was the outside linebacker, Huey Richardson, with a big hit almost as soon as Lewis got the ball. You know, it's Florida, they're playing good defense now. They're getting up, they're forcing the linebackers. That time, nobody blocked Richardson. He just went right for the quarterback, and Lewis happened to be in front of him where he got the ball, made the play, and this is what they have to do. They have to send the inside linebackers, Moyer and Odom, and go after him, even in a running game. Channing Wiles will kick it away from his own end zone. Combo of Barber and Simmons waiting for the punt. It'll be Stacy Simmons fumbling the ball. Can Barber get it? Yes. Right to the other deep back, Terrence Barber. So the Gators get a break, but they're still down by 20. They'll have it first and 10 solid field position to their own 46 when we return. When things are going well for the Gators, it's usually because Emmett Smith is having a big day. He's second in the SEC record book for career average yards per game behind Walker ahead of Bo Jackson. It has not been a good day, though, for Emmett Smith. Only 17 yards on seven carries, and right now with the offensive unit out on the field. They're looking for the wide receiver. Mills! Flag is down as he takes it in over Dana Hall. That's Did he push offense. Hall, though, to get to the ball? Oh, he did not a whole lot. He just pushed him to the ground. It'll all come back. Offensive pass interference is called. You get a little frustrated, Joel, because of the coverage has just been so great. You got number five Hall on one side and Lilo Lang number six on the other side. And they've just passed on these guys like blankets. By the offense. And watch what happens here. Penalty. Here it comes Lost down, field. Down. Second down. Bills, and watch what he does. <laughs> he got one hand on him, and then put his second hand on him and pushed him on the ground. 15-yard penalty. And a loss of down to compound the problems. We saw Emmett Smith on the bench. That was a live shot. The offensive unit is out there. Minus Smith. It's been that kind of day for the running game for the Florida Gators. They're working with a combination of the backfield now of Willie McClendon and Darryl Perry. Donald Douglas automobilizing. Fumbles it. Can he get away? Still on his feet. Still a loose ball. And now they're saying it was a forward pass. An interesting call to say the least. And the Gators retain possession. All right, it is an interesting call. The first thing you want to look at is where Donald Douglas was when he threw the ball. Was he beyond the line of scrimmage? If he was beyond the line <laughs> of scrimmage or not, because he pushes the ball forward. That is a forward pass. Good call by the official. But was he beyond the line of scrimmage? It was the 31-yard line, right, the original the line. All right, here it comes now. That's the 25, 30. No, he was, he was not beyond the line of scrimmage. He was. He was hit. Here it is. He's got to get to the 31. He comes up right here. Here's the 30-yard line coming up, Joel. And he pushes it there. He's only at the 30-yard line when he throws the ball away. Good call by the officials. 
Still, though, third and 25, back at the 31. Finally, Douglas gets some time. Under throws his man over the middle, looking for Harvey <laughs> Thomas, who took quite a shot from Lilo Lang. And there go the flags and the fists. That's well, if the bench is empty, Washington's got him. They got him 120 to 71. Two to one. <laughs> That's right. They're coming. The coaches, look at them. They're out in the field. They've got control. Good job by the coaching staffs. They got their people. Again, no doubt about it. A late hit by Lilo Lang. Well, the problem is Harvey Thomas was, was buffed all the way down the field. And then it's after the play. Look at, you can see. And then Lilo Lang, we've seen him hit the receivers twice going out of bounds. Look There's at Harvey. Ball. Wait a minute. Whoa. Foul. Gets the defense. 15-yard penalty. And a first down. down. Dave Hoffman came in to protect his quarterback, and Lang was all of a sudden the peacemaker. You know, Leonard Smith of Buffalo Bills, the safety, he gets two unsportsmanlike conducts in a game, so I'm, I'm interviewing him on, our, on a show that we have in Buffalo, and I said to Leonard, I said, you got two unsportsmanlike conducts, you got to control it. He said, the only time it's an Ill illegal hit on a guy is when he's on his way back to the huddle. <laughs> Some kind that's, of attitude. That's Lilo Lang. It's an automatic first down on the personal foul call, so the Gators get a break and hang on to it. Douglas going again. Going for the tight end. And it's complete. It's complete inside to the 49. And Trey Keller, the third string tight end, so they're really going deep now in the depth chart. He's a freshman from New Orleans. And yeah, we really do have to pass it on. This adversity on this football team, they lose. Kyle Morris, their starting quarterback. Yeah, is a senior. You know, and, and it just, you got two freshmen playing quarterback, and they just have not grasped it enough. Clock moving, 2.15 left in the third. Douglas under pressure, dumps it off. McClendon's got it, and tons of yardage. He's down to the 20. Still on his feet. All the way to the 13. <laughs> Willie McClendon. 37 yards on that catch and run. Joe, Willie McClendon, they've been, they've been keeping the backs in the block and just sending the receivers out. That time, McClendon leaves, but all the linebackers and the defensive backs took off. There was a blitz on. McClendon just sneaks out of the backfield, and he's wide open. Give Donald Douglas an awful lot of credit. You're going to see McClendon come out of the backfield now. He is to the left of the quarterback, and just when he popped, now look at, you don't see any defensive people anywhere near him. These are all defensive backs because the linebackers were up on the line of scrimmage. McClendon hammering it to the 10 yard line. He's a sophomore from Jacksonville. He was Florida's high school player of the year, his senior season. Runs a 4.4540, so he's got the speed. But he's also playing behind Emmett Smith. And it's got to be frustrating for Emmett Smith. He's down there on the sidelines, he's on a knee, and he's just watching this. You know, they realize that. Washington, they're keying everything on Emmett. Now, if you put two other backs in the backfield, people that they've not seen that much of, maybe they can open things up in the defense a little bit. McClendon gets the call again. He's wrapped up in a big hurry, falling close to the seven-yard line. Well, if you look at that play right there with McClendon running, if Emmett Smith would have had the ball, he would have been able to cut the seed to make that cut back to his right and might have had a touchdown. Because McClendon, watch what he does. He runs right into the defensive man. Perry is out blocking. Look at this. You see the play here? He runs into the defensive man, Hasselbeck. All he had to do was cut back to his right, which Emmett Smith has that ability to do. It would have been a touchdown. And you're talking about a player with only two years of experience as opposed to Emmett Smith, a fourth-year junior. The pitch on the option behind Simmons. Is it recovered by Washington? Yes, it did not go out of bounds. The Huskies get it back. Dana Hall forced the wide pitch. And Burkhalter, the free safety, recover the fumble. Second time, Joel, that we've seen the pitch go wide. And that's lack of experience, really. Pitch goes wide, and the Huskies, again, coming up with every big play so far this afternoon, get it back at their own 13-yard line. NBC Sports serves your need to know all week long. Dial 1-900-454-3500 for NBC Scores Plus. 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, anywhere in the USA. 
We have just received word from the Florida Gator bench. No injury to Emmett Smith, which is good news. He just wanted to take a break, so they're giving a little breather to the talented running back who finished third in the nation in rushing behind Anthony Thompson of Indiana and Pringle of right here in Southern California, Cal State Fullerton. But give the Washington Husky defense the credit. They took him out of the ball game. Craig Lewis on the carry. Across the 15 to the 17-yard line. A gain of four. All right, we talked at the beginning about Byrne, Brostick, number 60. Watch this. He's working on a double team here. And look at him get his arms down and just root out the defensive man, Philip Johnson, number 64, and stay with him. That will be the end of the third quarter. We had a lot of fun with Byrne Brostick a couple of days Remember, ago. Remember, it's what did he tell you? Don't call me Bernie. <laughs> we won't. He's from Hawaii. And he is going to be most likely a first-round draft choice in the NFL. That's the end of three. Be right back with the Freedom Bowl after these messages from your local station. A big difference between the size of the offensive line of the Washington Huskies. We've been talking about it this afternoon. The defensive front for the Florida Gators, Byrne Brostick, told us just yesterday the smallest defensive front that the Huskies have faced all year. Yeah, but it's, it's not important at 34 pounds. It's that extra inch in height that's doing it. And the vertical really comes into play. <laughs> yeah. Second and five for Kerry Conklin, who's got all day to throw it, and then underthrows Mario Bailey. Look at the officials are looking at They don't at know each what other. to call, and finally they call it an incompletion. It looked like here, from here, like it skipped into his chest. It did, and Will White goes over top of him. Don James is not happy. Here's a good spot for it, too, because it's coming right at you. Just take a look. Does he have it? There's White going over the top. And there's there's no way to tell, but it looks like he, you know, he's Tough got his call. hands underneath. But it took two officials to look at each other, and then one of them said, no, no, no. Yeah, I got it. He got it. No, he didn't. So it's third and five instead. Not a first down for the Huskies. Outside of their own 17-yard line. Great pass protection on that last play for Conklin. Again, good protection. And Bailey tied up, coming across the middle. Ball's incomplete. Looks like Will White had a little piece of the wide receiver, Bailey. Well, Bailey is the guy they like to go to in third down. He's come up with some key plays for him this year. But that time, the coverage by White was perfect. They have better than doubled their time of possession. The Washington Huskies with 332 yards of total offense. Still almost 15 full minutes left to be played in the Freedom Bowl. And don't forget the Gators come in ranked third in the nation defensively, giving up an average of only 242 yards per game to the opposition. Terrence Barber waiting for the outstanding punt by Channing Wiles. And he's down at the 38-yard line. A 50-yard punt by Wiles. Six-yard return by Barber. There's a timeout of the field in Anaheim, California. Washington on their way to a win in the sixth Freedom Bowl. Tomorrow it all starts at 3.30 Eastern. Join Bob Costas, O.J. Simpson, Ralph Wiley, and Bobby Beathard. As they get it underway for the AFC wildcard game. The Steelers taking on the Oilers in the Astrodome, the House of Pain. O.J. Simpson, before the game, will be talking to both head coaches. A couple of guys you don't put on the same invitation list to your party this holiday season. Chuck Knox and Jerry Glanville. And at halftime, Bobby Beathard with his year-end ratings. So join us tomorrow on NBC for the AFC Wild Card game. Douglas finding Ernie Mills wide open. The ball popped three, though. Loose ball outside of the 45 of the Huskies. Does Washington get it? Yes, they do. They are capitalizing on every opportunity. It looked like the receiver was possibly stopped in talking about his forward progress. There was no forward progress. He couldn't go anywhere, and, and that's the ball should have been stopped right there. The whistle blow. The Huskies have it at their own 47 on the turnover. I know we've been talking to Tom Flores for, for a couple of days here as present general manager. We'll talk about that in a second. But just take a look at here. Here's Mills across the middle. He's open. Now, the question is, is there forward progress? I mean, he can't go anywhere, but they come in on the inside and knock the ball up. Briscoe knocks the ball out of his hand. Is he stopped? Right here. 
Can they go anywhere? Here comes Briscoe. Watch his hand. Boom. The ball comes out. Anyway, when you were talking about Jerry Glanville, I know you meant to say Chuck Knoll, but you said Chuck Knox because we were talking. Before. Exactly. Don't ever say that again. Thank you. <laughs> but join O.J. Simpson tomorrow afternoon when he does talk to Chuck Knoll and Jerry Glanville. Through the hands of Bill Ames, you think things are going well for the Huskies today? It goes right to Craig Lewis. Greg trick Lewis play. with the reception. No, it's a trick play. <laughs> It's a trick play. We'll see the hook and ladder later. Yeah. <laughs> it goes right, goes right through Ames' hands. Ames says, are you throwing that ball at me? Because if you are, slow a lot of it touch down on a little the bit. Pass Watch too. this. Here's Ames, right through his hands, into Lewis's hands. And they pick up six yards on the play. Put that one in. Look at, look at Ames turn around looking at the quarterback. Like, I know you've got to get it out there quickly. Yeah. <laughs> but that was out of a shotgun. Slow that down a little bit. Craig, Greg Lewis on the carry inside the 45, near a first down. Close to the 43-yard line. We got a flag. Couple of flags into the air at the end of the play. I think it's against Polk number 99 of Florida. And are you ready for this? You know the man he hit in the mouth? Brostick. I admire your guts, son. But I... But if I, if I would... Ball, personal foul on the defense, 15 yards... Automatic first down. You know, I admire his guts, but if I'm, if I'm going to hit a guy in the mouth, I think I might pick on a back or something. Burn Brostick goes at about 300 pounds. So the 15-yard mark off on the personal foul at the end of the play at a first down for the Huskies. All right, number 60 right there is Brostick. He steps in. He pushes Puck away. Now watch this. This is the end of it. They, they move around a little bit, and then he just, right after that, is when Paul hits him in the mouth. First and 10 for Washington to the 29 of Florida. Conklin hit. Does a great job just to hold on to the ball. Richardson. Richardson has had a spectacular game despite the fact that they did score all 27 of their points in the first half of the outside linebacker. He has been all over the place today. All right. All right, this is, this is the end of the play again. This is the play before when Polk finally hits Brostick. Now, he's not fighting with Brostick there. He's fighting with Cunningham. We're just wrestling with him. Now watch. Watch what happens. He's on the right hand of the screen. They do a little pushing and shoving. Brostick's going to turn. Well, I thought we had him, but we didn't. But he does hit him in the mouth. Zach goes back to the 35, a loss of six. Conklin throwing it behind Orlando McKay, and McKay took quite a hit. From Will White, the free safety. 27-7, Washington leading the Florida Gators. Florida 8-9 and nine in postseason play in bowl games. While Don James and the Washington Huskies, at least in James' 15 years of had a good deal of success. This is their 11th bowl appearance. Seven and three. So far in the postseason. They look like they're going to make it eight and three today. As it stands right now, that when they show the film to the players, I think they're only going to show them the first half. Because the second half has been absolutely nothing. Washington takes a timeout. We will do the same with 12.39 left in the contest. And the Huskies in control. The Freedom Bowl is brought to you by Mitsubishi, bringing you a full line of award-winning automobiles. See them all at your Mitsubishi Motors dealer. By Northwest Airlines. In everything they do, they want to be the best. And by Nike, who reminds you to just do it. Hi, Ma. Hi, for those young men to smile. They're on the right side of the field with their team up by 20 points. Number 28, the rover back, Eric Briscoe, enjoying the afternoon in Southern California. The Huskies lead it 27 to 7 and are facing a third and long now. Third and 16 with the ball at the Gators, 35. So we welcome you back to Anaheim. Conklin running it into field goal position. Another one that's not going to win many sprints. Takes it down to the 25-yard line. So John McCallum will come on, who's two for two on the afternoon. He's at a 21-yarder. 
Also hit a 32 yarder towards the tail end. This is now going to be a 42 yard attempt. His longest of the season from 46 yards out. He is now 16 of 19 on the year. McCallum, senior from Seattle. Clock is moving with under 12 minutes left in the fourth quarter. Conklin the holder. And it doesn't have a chance. And the reason Conklin had to run with that football, Joel, is because Florida that time had a three-man front and they covered with eight guys. He had no place to throw it. Score remains the same as the Gators get ready to get the ball back in Anaheim. The all-time leading rusher in Florida football history is about to suffer a new career low if he does not return to the contest. Only 17 yards on seven carries, previous low of 46 yards. His worst so far this season had been at 86. 46 occurring last year. Well, he untied his shoes. Day. He untied his shoes. Been... Donald Douglas throwing on first down, and it's almost intercepted. Briscoe, the rover back, almost picked it off at the 45. They were looking for Lomack. We were talking about him earlier when we showed him on a bench. Briscoe, he's the one that caused that fumble in the last series of downs for Florida. Now he almost had an interception. And it hits him right in the hands. You can see Briscoe, he's right at the bottom right of your screen. He's just playing the quarterback, watching the ball, and look at that. Hit him right in the hands. Briscoe for Fort Lee, New Jersey, missed three games with a knee injury, still finished sixth on the team in tackles. Almost had his fourth interception of the season. Second and ten now for Douglas and the Gators. They're on 25-yard line with 11.42 left in the fourth quarter. Quick one for Ernie Mills is complete near the 25-yard line for a gain of five. Mincy, the quarterback, the backup corner on that side defending. This Washington Huskies defensive secondary is a very, very good defensive secondary, Joel. I mean, they've been on top of these plays all day long. I apologize for my voice going in and out because I live in Buffalo where it's been zero for the last two weeks. Get out here where it's 70 degrees, I get a cold. Can't cope. <laughs> Third and five from the 30. Douglas in trouble. Can he run for the first down? No. The Huskies get to him. Another punting situation for the Florida Gators. On fourth and two. And they just cannot possibly take a chance or even, you know, they're, they're down by 17 or 20 points, but uh, because they really haven't been able to move the ball very well against Washington running the ball with Emma Smith only getting 17 yards. And they don't have that confidence in their offensive line. They have not had any rhythm offensively the entire afternoon. Florida has only had three drives today of better than 30 yards. What a credit to that Husky defensive unit. Mincy from his own 25. Good return. Almost 10 yards on the return up to the 34-yard line. Don't forget on Monday, Championship Monday, it all starts at 1 o'clock Eastern with Bob Costas and O.J. Simpson live from the Orange Bowl, kicking it off with the Hall of Fame Bowl, Auburn, Ohio State, our second contest down in Tempe, a rematch of the 87 Fiesta Bowl, and what a game that was when Florida State won it in the final minute on a fourth down pass. As Florida State will take on Nebraska once again in the Orange Bowl, the battle for number one, Colorado and Notre Dame. So at 1 o'clock, it all starts. Down to the Orange Bowl with Bob Costas and O.J. Simpson. Delay to Greg Lewis across the 40 to the 41-yard line. Close to seven on the carry. This is one of the, this is the, one of the few draws we've seen, but it was a, a quick draw to Lewis that time. Rostick is the center, number 60. He is an excellent blocker, but watch this on Phillips. Just pushes him aside, stays with him. Look at that. Push him aside. Rostick has given a lot of the credit this year to the new offensive line coach, Keith Gilbertson. That's Greg Lewis for the first down across the 45 to the 47 yard line. But Keith Gilbertson was the former head coach at the University of Idaho for the Vandals. He's the new offensive line coach, and Rostick told us he has instilled a great deal of confidence in this group. He's given them a lot of freedom. 
And, and, and you talk to the players, they really like this offense because for years this offense was just, I mean, if, if the hole was called, you went right to that hole. This time, they, this, this year, they have some freedom, and it's paid off for them. And every time Kerry Conklin comes up to the line, he has the option to audibleize. He can change the plays. He goes to Andre Riley, and it's batted away by e Epicius Bartley. You know, Bartley never even saw the ball. I don't even think he turned his head. He just reached his arm up and knocked the ball away. I'm going to call him B from now on, like his teammates. He's a sophomore from Jacksonville and a very talented man in the secondary. It's a tough hitter. Watch him. Is he, is he really looking at the ball, or is he playing the, the, the receiver? Riley, yeah, oh, he is right here. I did For a second, I didn't think he even turned his head around. He got his head around and got the ball, knocked the ball down. Second and ten at the 47-yard line of Washington. Conklin committed to the pass. Looking for Bill Ames. What a load he is, the tight end. He wanted a lateral, but nobody was there in the 45-yard line where he's a yard, maybe a yard and a half short of the first down. Pat Moore had him wrapped up, the inside linebacker for the Gators. He has worked today. He is going to feel it tomorrow. He's been involved in just about every play. Bill Ames, the senior tight end from Spokane. He's got a brace on his right leg, and he is limping. He missed most of last year, almost all of last season, after major knee surgery on that right knee. And when you talk to the gate or to these Huskies, they say he is one of the most inspirational players on the team. Five catches today. 29 yard. Jay Berry in the backfield now. The one going in motion. Lewis on third and a yard and a half. Slithers his way through, and that's what he mentioned when he said, I can work my way through tight spaces. He did exactly that for a first down to the 42. He went under the defense that time instead of going over. He looked like he went underneath everyone. It's going to the right hand part of your screen. Now, watch Lewis. He get his head down. He goes underneath the tackle and picks up the first down. Odom was there. Couldn't stop him. He also mentioned to us that he feels he has great balance. That's one of his biggest assets, and he definitely displayed it on that last play. First and 10 outside of the 42 as Lewis goes in motion. Conklin with good protection. And it's dropped by Mario Bailey. But again, 95 miles an hour. The ball went right off of Mario Bailey's face and shoulder pads. I mean, that, that ball was flying, and he never got a chance to get his hands on it. It appears that Conklin, though, only knows one speed, regardless of the distance of the pass. <laughs> but this this ball actually should have been caught. I know he gets hit when the ball gets there, but watch this. It goes right off of his face mask, and he is hit after the ball is away. Will White was there. There's an example after a hit like that. That's the reason why so many tailbacks do not like to become pass receivers. They don't want to turn their back on the defender. That's right. And, and Joe, most of the best hits, or, or all of the best hits we've seen in this ballgame, have come from defensive backs. Mark Jones was the intended receiver, a freshman from Vista, California, so Don James, utilizing a lot of his players now as Conklin took a shot on that last play. Well, he's been taking shots all day long after, after unloading the ball, but you've got to give him a lot of credit for staying, staying in there. That's Philip Johnson who hits him. They're looking into the third and 10. 217 yards and most of the 217 coming in the first half for Kerry Conklin with two touchdown tosses. Third and 10, he has Riley, but he can't hang on to it. And that's... No blame on Kerry Conklin because he had to drill it into coverage over there. Bartley, the strong safety defending on the play. I'm telling you, some of the some of the hits that, that these wide receivers have been taking in the secondary, you know, you wonder why they can't hold on to the football. Here comes Riley in there now. That ball is 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 a little high, but that ball actually hits him in the hands, and then Bartley just drills him. Barber and Simmons going back to the Gators, waiting for another punt from Channing Wiles with 8 minutes and 21 seconds left in the fourth quarter. No points so far in the second half. As Wiley, Wiles rather, angles it over to the far side. Does a great job again. We saw it in the first half when he got it out of bounds to the one-yard line of Florida. This time, it's out of bounds at the eight. Outstanding work by the junior from Lacey, Washington, Channing Wiles. Puts the Gators in a hole inside their own ten. The Huskies.
Huskies of the University of Washington couldn't have drawn it up any better coming into the contest. 27 points in the first half and still a 20-point lead over a Gator squad that really hasn't been able to get their offense going all afternoon. Dexter McNabb is the new tailback, the sophomore. 18th carry of the season, a couple of yards to the 10-yard line. And for the interview of the year, I know this. Let's go to Jimmy Cepelo. Well, actually, I'm on the sideline, the Husky sideline, with the man of the year, Sun Dodger Canali. He is the, Denali, I'm sorry. He is the fiercest dog that you will find, as you can see. Uh, in fact, I think the defense of the Huskies take after him because this guy is about as quiet and calm as you can get. Eight years old, and he has been with the Huskies all eight years. And this is Kim Cross. He is the trainer and the owner of uh, Sun Dodger. How in the world did uh, you come by this name? The name Denali is from the Indian Eskimo name, meaning the great one. And Sun Dodger was chosen from a vote from the Husky fans. All right, he is a great one. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, Sun Dodger. Well, I'll tell you what, Jimmy. That dog really paid attention to you. <laughs> Disappointed, though. We couldn't get a prediction out of Sun Dodger for the uh, Orange Bowl. I thought we get a comment. Look at his eyes. Hmm. My eyes have been like they that. They love those dogs. Those Huskies, the University of Washington. It's a beautiful campus, and what a sight that stadium is. Right on Lake Washington. Third and four, the battle of the 14. Donald Douglas changing the play at the line of scrimmage. Orchestrating things for Terrence Barber, who's got the first down on the catch. Out of the 24-yard line. It was almost like he was directing Barber from the line of scrimmage, like, you run past the 20 and stay to the sideline. All right, and we have some new players in there. He does it, and he puts it right there on Barber. The defensive man is William Doctor, number 10. But look where this pass is thrown. To the outside, hits him right in the stomach with the ball, first down. It's a little bit too late, that's all. Douglas hitting Barber, pointed to Barber, and then pointed towards the sideline where he wanted him to go. It worked to perfection. They're laying it out early. 6.47 left in the fourth. Barber buying some time. As a man, that's Lomack, and it's intercepted. Intercepted by the reserve, Tommy Smith, the backup rover back, the freshman from Lancaster, California. Well, Donald Douglas, he breaks out to his right, and Tommy Smith just watches the quarterback downfield and he is a safety he's not even in the picture yet now look at look at smith making a break for the ball just goes up and takes the ball at a high point interception washington with the ball on the 38 yard line 30 almost 39 yard line i mean when you, when you show it all the way it's going to be picked off we talked about it earlier if you've just joined us when you're a team like florida that relies so much on one area of the game the way they do their running game better than 2600 yards on the ground for the florida gators this year and all of a sudden you're down by 20. as jay berry the redshirt freshman from north glen colorado takes it across the 40. out to the 44 for a gain of five you know it's going to be difficult to play catch up because you're going to have to throw the ball something you don't do very well and you're going to have to go to two freshman quarterbacks it really, you know, it really is a, is a problem for Florida. You know, it, the one thing that Washington talked about the last couple of days is we shut down Emmett Smith, we shut down Florida, and we want them to have to throw the football. Brunel, the backup quarterback, in there once again to Southpaw. He had one series in the first half. Jay Barry. Hit behind the line by Jerry Odom. He is so lightning fast, the inside linebacker, the junior from Merritt Island, Florida, for the Gators. No gain on that carry for Barry. And Steve Spurrier will most likely be announced as the Gators head coach as early as tomorrow afternoon. We talked to Gary Darnell, had a comment from Gary in the first half, and he said, no doubt about it, as far as he's concerned, that Steve Spurrier is the next Gators head coach. Does he have some wild ideas on offense? Rennell throwing on third and six, and he's got his receiver complete. Mark Jones, another freshman for the Huskies. From Vista, California, with a 13-yard reception for a first down inside the 44. They just keep bringing different guys in. Now, Brunel is, is, is the quarterback, and, and look at this. Here's a guy who's been sitting on the bench all afternoon, comes out, makes a great move, a pivot back to the outside. And the blocking up front, this has not changed all day long. This is the way it's been. Yes, 
First down inside the 44, 5-16 left. Jay Perry on the carry. Jay Perry, okay. Got it close to the 42-yard line for a gain of a yard. And when you talk about this Gator defense, they've done a great job in the second half. Let's face it, they've held the Huskies scoreless after Washington scored 27 of the first half. It's a very, very young group for the Florida Gators. 13 of the 22 players on their two-deep defensive chart are either freshmen or sophomores, so most of them back. But the key to it is the one thing we talked about in the first half. The inside linebackers have become more active in the second half than they were in the first half. Ball at second and nine. Bounce out of the 42. Brunel running for his life. Flag on the play where you normally see a holding call. And Brunel out of bounds. They'll spot him out around the 37-yard line. Huey Richardson forcing him out. And I got to believe they were holding Philip Johnson that time, number 64. Another freshman for the Gators from Clinton, Mississippi, Philip Johnson. Holding on the offense, 10-yard penalty, still second It's down. the only mistakes they've made all day long. Penalties. Penalties. The only thing where you'll find a, a blemish on the mark of the Washington Huskies today has been the penalty flags. All right, let's look at Cunningham, number 79, and that's Johnson coming in, and there is the hole right there. The flag goes up in the air. So they mark it off, bring it back 10 yards on the holding call. With 4.26 left in the fourth quarter, it's back outside of the 48-yard line where they'll be facing now. Second and long. Huskies are ready to go. So are the Gators, and now we're waiting on the officials. Second and 15. First down inside the 30, all the way to the 19-yard line. 29 yards on the carry. Sam Scavella, the quarterback, finally catching up with him in the defensive backfield. Joel, the reason this play works so well is number 51, Greg Baldwin, the linebacker, he will take a side. Right here, he runs around the block of Cunningham. When you go around the block, instead of taking the blocker on, you open up the hole. And that's exactly what happened. Huskies are about to win their eighth bowl game under Don James in his 15 years at Washington, leading by 20. I'm Catherine Couric. Tonight on NBC Nightly News, President Bush says that the raid by U.S. troops on the home of the Nicaraguan ambassador to Panama was, as he put it, a screw-up. Nicaragua plans to expel 20 American diplomats. In Jerusalem, 50 peace demonstrators were hurt in a clash with police. Tonight on NBC Nightly News. All right, here's Cunningham here, and here's Baldwin here. What happens is when Baldwin steps up, watch the right arm of Cunningham. If you're going to call anything here, you would have called holding. He just gets a piece of him. Now, here comes Baldwin. He's committing himself up inside. Did you see the right arm of Cunningham? He reaches out to try to grab him. Just enough to get Baldwin off the player. 29 yards. On the run by Jay Barry, takes it down to the 18-yard line as we bring you back to Freedom Bowl number six. Joel Myers along with Paul McGuire and Jimmy Cephalo. A little bit better than four minutes left, and Washington looking for more, leading by 20. The injured player was partly number 24 for, or 44 for Florida, but he's all right. He's back up on his feet. Darius Turner will not go down. <laughs> Finally, at the 15-yard line, but not before a gain of close to four. Well, this 89 campaign started out like the Husky season was probably going to end in late November. At one point, they dropped three in a row to Arizona, Colorado, and USC. The longest losing streak in 15 years under head coach Don James. But the Huskies rallied to win five of their last six. And when we talked to Washington over the last two days, Paul, to a man, every one of them said the UCLA game was the turnaround of our entire season. We were down 21 to nothing, came back to win at the Rose Bowl 28 to 27. 
They, they were all, almost afraid in that ball game that the score was going to be 48 to nothing. Jay Berry giving up ground and losing yardage back to the 20. Philip Johnson getting through the defensive tackle for the Gators. And also Baldwin was in there, number 51. So remember Barry now, so don't get carried away. There's no two-minute warning in these in college. I thought you were taking a break anyway. <laughs> no, there's no two minutes. <laughs> there's two minutes and 40 seconds left. The executive producer of NBC Sports, Terry O'Neill, our producer of today's game, George Finkel, our director, Brian Sheriff. As Brunel is going to scamper, and he's got room to the sideline. Inside the 10, to the 5, he's in. Touchdown, Huskies. <laughs> 19-yard touchdown run. That's what young men like Brunel work for all year long. First having the opportunity to play and then to do something with it when you get in there. And Brunel, it was a, an excellent run. He just... Once he broke out, he's got pretty good foot speed. Such a long season. They come into camp before school even starts in August. It's an 11-game schedule. Here it is five months later. Brunel had only 12 pass attempts the entire season over that 11-game schedule. As Chris Jolly is going to come in, the backup place kicker. He'll have an attempt now, the extra point try. But that's a reward now for Mark Brunel, and Chris Jolly gets in on the act. The first points of the second half go to the Huskies of Washington. All right, Mark Brunel, when he steps up, when he just steps up, he sees that everybody is covered. There was a five-man rush that time. Brunel gets back to the outside, moves the ball into his right hand, away from the defense, and then gets the touchdown. Good run. They love it for the reserves. Now we're going to find out on this series of downs how well you studied your, your, your 28 deep depth chart. I'm ready to work with a blindfold on. <laughs> <laughs> Two minutes and 21 seconds left as the Huskies celebrate. They will finish the season at 8-4. and four. And don't forget the big AFC wild card game tomorrow. All starting at 3.30 Eastern with Bob Costas and O.J. Simpson as the juice will... Talk to the two head coaches before the start of the game. Chuck Noll of the Steelers, Jerry Glanville of the Houston Oilers. That game at the Astrodome. And then at halftime of that contest, Bobby Beathard with his year-end ratings. So join us for the NFL's AFC wildcard game. Steelers and the Oilers, all at 3.30 Eastern. You know, we had the opportunity to do the Steelers five times this year, and they won four out of the five. Didn't they send you a plane ticket so you could be at the game? Yeah, but they said it, so I go to Pittsburgh. <laughs> They're playing in Houston. Smarter than I thought. It's over the head of Simmons. Mike Dodd was kicking it off. Another reserve for the Huskies. And the Gators will have it. First and 10 at their own 20-yard line. I'd also like to remind you, our replay producer today, Jeff Himes, and our technical director, Skip Hornbrook, and I'd like to thank our statistician for his great support, Dennis Munition. 34 to 7, Washington leading Florida. And Lex Smith, who we saw for a good portion of the second quarter, the redshirt freshman from Dade City. Back in there at quarterback now for the Gators. Daryl Perry working into the backfield now with Dexter McNabb. Receiver fell down. Was he able to scoop it up? No, it falls incomplete. They were looking for the back in the flat. Well, Lilo Lang, one of the leaders, senior from Los Angeles on this team. Along with Bill Ames. Getting ready for the showers. Chuck Waberson was the last one. The back in the flat trying to make that grab. Almost came up with it off the turf here at Anaheim Stadium. Smith oh, off the tight end's fingertips. Good job, that time it was intended for Mike Brandon, a sophomore from Perry, Florida. Chico Fraley with a big hit. 
Well, we've seen that happen so many times today where you just stretch out that receiver and you're going to get him killed doing it. That ball has to come down to give him some shot at it. A lot of things to be encouraged about, though, if you're a Florida Gator fan. Donald Douglas and Lex Smith, two very talented young men with three more seasons in Gainesville. And they're hoping Kyle Morris can return as well as it's drilled. It's complete to Barber across the 45, past the midfield strike. Perfect pass by Lex Smith to the 49-yard line for a gain of 31. When you're talking about encouragement because you have two young quarterbacks and you have Lex Smith and Donald Douglas, that time Lex Smith showed some poise. His receiver was not open. He pulled the ball back down, waited until the receiver got open, Terrence Barber, number three, and then hit him in the opening. That takes patience. Barber also back next year. Only a junior for the Gators. Smith throwing on first and ten. Almost sacked in the backfield. That makes it near the midfield stripe. Before he's hit by the linebacker, Mark Godot. But Harold Hasselback almost had his second sack of the day. He did. And again, again, it showed some poise by Lex Smith to get out of the grasp and, and pick up about a, well, a one-yard loss. It could have been about a seven-yard loss. Has to be a bittersweet feeling for Gary Darnell, the opportunity to coach the Gators over the last seven games of the season. But at the same time, Steve Spurrier expected to be announced tomorrow. And as we all know, new coach and usually a brand-new staff. Smith going for his tight end, Greg Keller. And a penalty marker is down at the 15-yard line. Yeah, well, that, that was pass interference. They were holding on the play. Keller had no chance of getting to the ball. Sneaking up on Don James. Not exactly working camouflage. There's a wind blowing. <laughs> Offsetting penalties. Penalty against the Gators, the pass interference against the Huskies. They'll replay the down. Second a little bit better than 10 with the ball at the 50. 55 seconds left. This is also a situation where you test the guts, guts of your quarterback because he knows, Lex Smith knows, that the defensive line, they have no run responsibility whatsoever, and they're going to just tee off and come after him. Gators this year averaged 245 yards a game on the ground. They haven't even reached the century mark today in rushing. Smith overshooting his man, and it's dropped by the defensive back, Shane Pacoa. Uh, I wonder how Shane is 6'3", 195. I think Mitzi the on this line is what happened. Pacoa had the, had the ball. He's just sitting there waiting on it. His brother is 6'3", 290 on the offensive line for the Huskies. Guess who ate all the food? Shane <laughs> probably suffered with Jeff taking advantage of the situation. Big offensive lineman for the Huskies. Both the same size as far as height is concerned. Smith scrambling away from the pressure. Throws it up for grabs, and it's taken in by Barber. He almost went over the line of scrimmage, though. He went over the line of scrimmage. Okay. And uh, they're going to mark it there. Now they finally throw a 